tell you, man, it's hot up there. Oh, hot down there. It's yeah. nice in here now. So, no, it's a, yeah, a great day for D1NZ Drifting, Cole, for Valvoline D1NZ. Who's impressed you so far? There's, there's, there's a few drivers out there, you know. I have to say, Fang and Dan, always real smooth. As I've said all year so far, I've only been the one round. Uh, Cody Pullenbury, really like his style of driving. Really aggressive, uh, really smooth. Uh, a man, I think, to watch. Obviously, Sean Potros having huge car failures. They have, as I understand, done a full swap on that front subframe on Ra Hader's car. Wow. And uh, he hopefully will be up for his first battle. Obviously, qualifying a lot lower than we've seen previously. So, Well, as you mentioned pr in the pre-show, we... Uh, Issues for Ra Hader's car. Ra Hader, Pro Sport driver, big crash in Pro Sport today. Smashes the side of the car. Of course, his car getting used by Sean Potros. What a gentleman, though. Yeah. Offering up his car, it is in Pro Sport. It's been getting driven hard all weekend. And then to go, hey, my car here, up for grabs, uh, if you want to drive it. And obviously, yes, didn't have the best of luck and had a motor failure. Oh, not a motor failure, sorry, obviously the crash, but they've now ripped the whole front end out of Sean's car and put that all into uh, Ra's car. So I, you know, I just don't think people understand how much work is going in into the pits down there at the moment. I know uh, in the pro sport, Adam Whitehead put it into the wall really hard as well. Uh, gave up his five minute and forfeited the last part of his run, but now has three hours to fix the car. A whole new front end will no doubt be going on there. Well, here is the championship points. Michael Thorley, 74 points, eighth position. Kurt Blackie, 76 and seventh. From there, we move to Scott Dinsdale, 76 as well for sixth place. Taylor James, Jason Ferrin. Top three, though. Sam West, 96. Sean Potros, 116. Who's the guy on top? Yeah, Bang and Dan Woolhouse uh, leading it out again. So be good to see how these guys go. If I know he's sitting there parked up, ready to go out. He's got a battle coming up. Let's go and see what's happening down with Stephen McIver. Thanks, boys. Uh, Sam West, third. Remember last time? Last time out at Hampton Downs? Uh, very, very cool. Can I, can I just quickly say that uh, Jordan Joyce's crew said on the first run, Mr. Gear, have no idea what happened oh, in the second okay. one, and they are incredibly <laughs> upset because, as you know, that team is what's been going on this weekend. Sam West, mate, here we go. Well, big start to the available in D1. NZ last week. How about this week? How are you feeling? Uh, not too bad, actually. We had a big crash on our uh, bloody first, first practice lap, so I haven't had many laps in the car, but, you know, we go out, we got it fixed, so we'll go out and give it a go. What do you think of this track, pal? I love it, eh? You know, it's nice and tight. <laughs> it gets the old uh, nerves going, which is nice, so um, I'm good mates with Connor. We've driven a lot together in pro sport, so we'll put on a show for everyone, I think. All right, uh, Connor Halligan sitting up there. What if I could push Tony to run a little bit quickly over to Connor Halligan? <coughs> I know, I know. I'm going to make him work a little bit. Connor Halligan, uh, your first experience at Hampton's a little bit, uh, let's say, up and down. But what do you make of this track now? Yeah, Hampton was uh, a little bit up and down, yeah, a bit tough. But um, I love Mount Smart. It's one of my favourite tracks. This in um, Bay Park, both the, the, round, yeah, the smaller rounds and the stadiums. So you like concrete? Oh, yeah, I love concrete. Obviously, um, don't like going into it, but you know, I love getting close to it. And, you know, that's what makes it exciting. And OK, but time to battle, buddy. Get into it. Here we go. Connor Halligan to Sam West. Two boys stepping up from Pro Sport into the big time. Valvoline D1NZ. Well, I've seen one car scrub. Let's get ready for the next. That'll be the RHP Reed and Harrison Performance. Two JZ powered, 180 out of... It's toting as Sam West. Sam West, you've done a bit of drifting with him in the past. Yeah, I have indeed. Good driver. Really good to see him step up. And as we just seen, you know, he's third in the champion points uh, at the moment after round one. And it also showed him the confidence is there to step up, come up into the pro round. Yes, you've got a bigger set of tyres on there and a bit more grip, but doesn't mean you can't also, uh, you know, do well. So here we go. Our beautiful judges stepping up, obviously, for the... Round two here, we've got Andrew Redwood on the left, Dana Templeman in the middle, in the middle and uh, Joel Counter on the far right-hand side. So, Look, there's Brendan Dunk. What's Brendan Dunker doing in the background? Yeah, I thought he retired. I'm sure, I'm sure he came close to that. Well, let's have a look and see what's going to happen. We've got these two drivers out of pro sport moving into pro. We've just talked about one of them, Sam West. The other one is, of course, the man who led the championship and won the championship in pro sport last year. Moving into pro, Connor Halligan in the Jason Overs Builders McKinstry Roofing 1.5 JZ Nissan S14. Yo, here we go. Connor leading out. Nice initiation. Look at that. Right out onto that first outside clip. Pulling a bit of a gap here. Obviously feeling really comfortable in these concrete rounds, like he just said. Nice touch on that inner clip. Not dropping a wheel. 
Sam West now trying to play catch up, shortening up that line a little bit to tuck on the inside. But look at this precision driving from Connor Halligan as he's transitioned through the smoke. This is what the drivers are seeing right now. They're coming through that wall of smoke as they push out into a concrete wall. And what a lead run there by Connor Halligan. Great lead run, massive smoke show. I did notice that there was a massive dive by the RHP 180 that was in chase position. We'll check, and check it out on the uh, Repco replay when they come and bring it up. I think we might, this man here might be in problem. Yeah, well, it is obviously something you're allowed to sort of do here. Obviously, Repco replay here. Let's check this out. Sam doesn't need to be right out on that judge's line. He does need to be on the door. It's about proximity at these uh, courses. We want nice, close battles. So see him transitions a little bit earlier. Doesn't push out to that outside zone. And now really tucking up on the inside, trying to catch back up that proximity. But right here, Connor does a nice transition. We can't see through the smoke. This is what they're going through, Steve. Yeah. This is crazy. And then obviously, yeah, bit of a transition where Sam probably put on a little bit more angle and Connor was able to slightly pull away there. Well, we'll go back to the second half of the battle. There's a bit of work to do. It's up to the judges to make the decision. It's a judge sport. It's the WD1 exam. As we get ready for the second half of the second battle. And what can Sam West do as he leads into the first turn? Wow. Wow. Big love tap there from Sam West. Throwing it right up onto the wall. Not what he wanted to do. Now big understeer and shuts it down. Well, that'll be all she wrote for uh, Sam West on that one. Nice, easy win to be fair for Connor Halligan on this. This is our top 24 too, eh, Steve? Yes, yeah, so this is on the left-hand side of the top 24. And you can see that Sam West, he knew he'd made contact, but he also knew that the car behind him was going to be right behind him. Potential contact. So he literally drove it as far forward as he could, try to get out of the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not ideal. Sam just pushing a little bit too wide on there. Obviously, see... Not too much damage, very, very lucky. Uh, uh, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> kind of very lucky on that one, but here we go, Repco Repo. Look at the initiation, bang, bang. Just tags the rear end clean on that first clip and uh, shut it down. Look at the understeer that is created. Obviously, comes out of drift, nowhere to go. I think Connor actually made a little bit of contact, had nowhere to go. It's not his fault that he made contact as he tried to come through side by side. Yeah, but gutting, no doubt, for Sam West. Obviously, coming off a high uh, of round one, now into round two, getting knocked out, and no doubt in the top 24 here. I think we have a result there, Steve. Let's see who's going to go. Connor Halligan taking all three strikes. Wow. Well, this one here, this next battle, should be the, one of the big ones for us because it's going to indicate just how much work a team's done. Because right now, on the bottom left-hand side of the uh, of the tree, Sean Potros versus Mitch Lana. That should be up next. There he is. There's, there's wow. Mitch. Do we see Rahader's car? Now, this is the uh, Warehouse Parts S15 from Rotorua. I cannot see it uh, as we speak at the moment. Yeah, of course, in front of us, though, is the Galore Parts Group 2021 GRA90 Supra. 2JZ under the bonnet. That thing is a monster. It is. It's an awesome car. But what we might see here, Steve, is actually, Sean, obviously, yes, he's not to the line, but he still has his five minutes. So maybe that is what's going to happen here. Yes, he's gridded up here, but they may wait for a five-minute call to give him just a little bit more time. So... Uh Hopefully, they can get him to the line. I did see the car. Had the new front end back on it. Wow. Uh, hopefully, ready to go. Obviously, Mitch sitting nice and comfortable there. I wonder if Steve can have a word with him while he's down there. See, I think we're looking for an update. Stephen, what's happening down there, mate? Well, that is, that is the interesting question, is it not? Uh, Mitch Lana, you're sitting here waiting for Sean Potros to turn up. Uh, we knew that was going to be a real challenge. They were, they were punching the, the front end and the back end. And what do you understand from down the pits? I mean, good on the boys, obviously. I'm not sure of the guy's names, um, but the guy that gave him the car from Pro Sport. Rahader. Rahader, yeah. Um, good on him for giving him the car and giving him the opportunity to qualify. Obviously, he's trying to go for a championship. He did well last season, did well last round, and the atmosphere is great. And, you know, it sucks that I, I don't know if they're going to get the car ready or not, but hopefully they do, and I'll be here waiting. Yeah, well, if they've called a, f a five at this particular point in time, you're going to be sitting here for a while. It's uh, pretty hot. Hey, uh, what do you uh, make of this track in the parts school or Supra? Um, love the track, love the car, obviously. Um, I'm waiting for something when you say, I don't love so one thing. Well, I, the only thing I don't like is I haven't had the time in the seat. Um, obviously, we're, we don't drive this type of car. I've never driven this chassis before, don't drive this type of motor. And 
I'm trying to adjust to it as much as we can and we're not really getting the practice that I need to, to gel with the car, but the last practice session we just had felt really comfortable in the car and I'm really looking forward to getting out there. So it must be that race tech seat. It's a New Zealand company, mate. They make they make seats for many, many famous drivers. So put your put your name on that one and uh, do some business today. Yep, sure will. Like I said hopefully Sean gets out here, we can get a good battle in and uh, yeah, we'll go have some fun today and hopefully we can proceed towards the end of the field. All righty, we will uh, try and find out what's happening. So just remember what happened. So Sean Potro has had to qualify in Ra Hader's car. Ra Hader went out this morning in one of the battles in Pro Sport and put it into the wall. He put it into the wall. So I've just been alerted that there is a still a now a five-minute call on the Sean Potro's replacement car. Can I just remind you that team's gone through three cars. Anyway, this this is a 20th year of Valvoline D1NZ and some people just love it. One person that loves it is our three-time defending champion. He's been here since day dot. You know it is. Fang it in. Hey guys, my name's Fang it in and I drive the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D and I've been drifting for about 20 years. So my passion for drifting began um, oh, around about 21 years ago. Uh, just a group of my mates um, all hanging out. We had our own workshop and had some pretty cool street cars way back then and started watching the Japanese drifting. We took it as maybe a bit of a craze, you know, like, oh, it's drifting stuff. Oh, we'll give this a crack. Um, yeah, so look what it's turned into now, you know, um, a very professional motorsport. Um, still fast growing around the world and look at the type of the vehicles that we're competing in. D1NZ had actually been running for most probably a season I think and I did the odd event and then it was like okay I really love this, this is, I want to do well at it. Um, I you know I actually hit, my car was actually still road registered at that time and um, I was like nah She's, we're deregistering it, we're doing all the stuff, um, you know, new engine package and, and just started the full season, you know. We met a lot of cool people throughout that journey um, that we're still friends with now and um, yeah, definitely like pretty proud to be part of um, the start of D1NZ. I guess um, the highlight for me was I think it was around 2011 when um, Shane Van Gisbergen came drifting with us and it was more, it was like the Ford versus Holden, you know. Um, I guess for me that was really awesome to see two supercars as such um, drifting and having a good battle. Um, they were some pretty awesome memories. You know, whether I qualify number one or qualify mid-pack or whatever, um, I just want uh, someone to come up to me after qualifying and say, that was so mean, I loved it. Like, that, I, I, you know, even if I spun or something like that, um, I've given it 100% and, and someone's remembered that, you know what I mean? Like, they've gone, man, like, pity that you spun on that last bit because that run was on fire. Um, there was no mistakes made, but pushed it too hard here. And then moving into competition, it's about having a rememberable battle. Like, you know, the, 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 you know, your fans walk away from the event or whatever you see on TV, that it's something that they, they people talk about, you know? So we actually run uh, two Ford Mustang RTR uh, Spec 5Ds. Uh, one has a uh, five litre Coyote supercharged V8 uh, and just runs a TTI sequential gearbox with a factory rear diff um, and axles. This car here showcases what you can purchase from a dealership as a road car as such. Um, 750 horsepower um, straight off the showroom floor so that's pretty awesome um, but we have ramped this car up over time and it's about 930 horsepower and it's a pretty awesome setup. Um, we won the championship in it last year, um, proving that you don't really need the best of the best um, that you can do it or the fastest car. Um, this car has pretty good grip, um, but for the power that it's got, it most probably needs 
a bit more suspension travel and, and things like that. Our actual competition car that we were meant to be running this season runs a 428 cube Cornet racing engine and runs a four speed gearbox with a Winters quick change rear end. Uh, it's a lot lighter, 90% carbon fibre. It's, uh, it's about 300 kgs lighter than this car. Um, super awesome, it sounds amazing and revs to the moon and back. It makes about 880 horsepower. It's a little rocket ship because of the weight difference. Like the way that you build a car or the way you make it sound um, represents the type of person you are. Well, dang it, Dan, what an amazing guy. He certainly had a lot of battles over the years, and this is a person he's battled against many times before. This guy here, we haven't seen a lot of him, but he is back in the four in road area. RB30 powered Nissan S15. Welcome back, the people's champion, Mr. NRD, Nico Reed, going up against Jace Brown, the Vital Tires Valvoline. Frankenstein 07, let's see if they do as they fire it down the straight here at Mount Smart Stadium. Yeah, nice clean entry there by Nico Reed. Look at that, Jace Brown right on the door. Not giving him an inch here. Nico holding a nice line, sitting the car out nice and wide. He's been slowly getting better and better as he's getting comfortable in the car again in these concrete rounds. Holding that, look at that nice wide line there. Really holding up Jace Brown and now no doubt will pull a bit of a gap here as they come through that little centre section. Look at that, Jace Brown pulling out a drift by the look at that. Handing Nico Reed as he has the tail light hanging off the back of the car. Wow, really good to see there. But it looks like, yeah, Jace Brown, no, shut it down again. Now I've seen through practice, uh, he spat a dry sump belt. Had to shut the car shut down. Uh, lost, obviously, all oil pressure. I know they've been having a few other issues going on with the uh, supercharger belts, but whew, wow. Well, let's have a look at the replay. Nico Reed flying out there in the tunny far. Yeah, that's a nice clean entry there by Nico. And Jace doing a really clean chase line as well. Just sitting back a little bit off, off the door of Nico Reed as they come through that inside clip. Now pushing to that outer zone. Now look how much shallower Jace is. Catches right up here. Nico holding the line nice and wide. Now shortcutting through here. Jace just about caught himself out. Did it again, run a bit wide here. And then right there, something's happened. And he shut the car down. And look at that, Nico. Finishing off, looking real nice in that Fawn Rotor S15. Yeah, Nico Reed, great to have him back. We haven't seen him for a couple of years. Of course, Nico Reed, uh, one of the most successful single season people. I don't think anyone's ever won four in a row. Yeah, I know. That Only was unbelievable person. when he did that. And obviously, the, the uh, support that comes with Nico Reed, uh, such a great family and a group of friends that uh, come with him as well. So good to see them all back out here having a lot of fun, enjoying it. Um, but yeah, not. Very good here for Jace Brown uh, with something going on. Well, the Vitor Tires Valvoline S13 team. Have you heard so, some information? Yeah, heard, heard a little bit of information. It has lost oil pressure, uh, has Jace Brown's car. So, obviously, with the computer they have in it, that, that motor would have shut down. Oil pressure's dropped too low and uh, obviously saving. Uh, it's such an expensive and unique motor. Yep. So, yeah, very sad day there for Jace Brown. Well, it's uh, action packed down there in the pits already. Stephen McIver's down there. Let's go down and check out what's up going on with him. Well, you know what we were doing, Cole, about an hour. Uh, it would have been basically an hour and 40 ago. We were looking at uh, the Ra Hader car and going, how the hell are they going to get that fixed? I can tell you what, they got it fixed with about that much left in the five minutes. People were cheering and yahooing, so Sean Potros will take his place on the grid for the first battle. This is the unbelievable thing about this drift community. I've got to remind people they don't understand this whole game. People from other teams will help other teams to make them get into the battles. That's the most important thing. There are people around this country battling right now. Think of Rex Davies from Mimico. He is sending six diggers, giving, giving six diggers to compatriots in the Hawke's Bay to help the cleanup. That's what the drift community is about. That's what being a New Zealanders are about. But boy, we are about to battle. It is so cool. Yeah, what a, what a great guy Rex is from Mimico. And of course, J-Swap contractors agreeing to ship all of those diggers down there to go up and help with the relief efforts. Such awesome support, and that's throughout. You know, we obviously have some other drift family down in Napier in the Hawke's Bay. 
uh, doing it hard down there as well. I've seen Dylan Woolhouse, he's helping out, trying doing a bit of clean up. Matt Kwok and their crew as well. It's, uh, you know, when, when these bad things happen, it's so great to see how Kiwis will all band together in any way, shape or form to um, help out people in need. Yeah, and no, that's great to see. We've got a couple of drivers ourselves. One of them's just on the probably right-hand side of the screen right now, which is the little FCR X7 of Adam uh, Whitehead. He uh, he took 12 hours to move on up. Uh, Zach Antic, Zach Zayden, he was the other person. Um, but none of them, crew, know anything because they're still there. But they managed to get out and uh, come, on, come on up. Ah, so good to see, eh? And it just shows the commitment as well. Just like what Stephen was saying, the, the family uh, orientation here with everyone in the pits will help any way to yep. get another team out. Even if you might have been against the team, generally, I remember, uh, you know, Darren used to crash into me all the time and everyone would band in to try and either fix my car, fix his car, our team would help them. And it's just great to see. It's, it's a sport with uh, so much heart and soul. And in, uh, two people with a lot of heart and soul, mate, is uh, definitely you there with that great smile. Oh. And obviously, yeah, myself, I just sort of linger along here and, and help out the team. Well, I just, it's so good. I mean, 20 years we've been doing this at D1NZ, about 10 for me, probably about 15. How long have you been? Yeah, about 15, I think I've been, I, I was driving for, so I think I'll probably be, yeah, I guess another two years after that. So, yeah, it's 15, 16 years. But look at you, oh. You're, oh. You, you stallion. Wow. The man with the smile. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I've got the same watch on. Oh, oh uh, I love it. Let's get back, back out to the drifting. One of the Mimico team going up against the uh, the mighty McManaway, the mongrel McManaway in the purple people leader. Five minutes. What's that one? Anyway, let's go back to it. Let's see what the uh, Mimico team DSR S14 of Dave Stebbin can do in the lead position. Yeah, Dave doing a nice entry there. Look at the car just pitched up real well, tucking up on the inside. McManaway doing really nicely, just sitting back, but over-rotates just about right there as he transitioned through the uh, outside zone there. And look at that, pulling out a drift, giving uh, away the chase for uh, against Dave there. But look at Dave, doing a nice clean run here. First battle out, getting comfortable, but yeah, McManaway uh, just over-rotated, I think, as he came off that inside clip and went to switch to the outer zone. So big 10-0, no doubt, there for... Um, Dave Stedman, so good to, good to see. You know, they've had a bit of a hard luck, but yeah, here he goes. So the five minutes have started for Jace Brown there, but Repco replay here, Steve. We can see that a big quick whip on the handbrake. Off he goes, Dave Stedman powering out in the Napa Auto Parts Mimico Rocker 24 7 S14. Where did it go wrong though? Watch right here. So as McManaway transitions, look at the angle he just has to dial on. Really up on the inside, not on the line that the judges want to see. Trying to gain that proximity back and then there, he just shut it down from there knowing um, he'd lost that part of the battle. So he'll regroup, he gets the lead now and uh, no doubt will be pushing hard to make Dave make a mistake to try and get a rerun out of it. But there's Jace Brown. Second half of replay, off we go. And it's McManaway. What car's he in? He's in the 180 this weekend. We've got oh, three of them. What an animal that was there by McManaway coming in to that first section, just wheel spinning the whole way through the start of the section. Got nothing to lose, really needs to force a, uh, an error from Dave Stedman. But Dave just sitting back a little bit, being a bit cautious. Knows he's got a 10-0 up the sleeve. Nothing silly needs to happen, but does need to stay in drift. But look, what a shot that was, Steve. <laughs> That's a car sitting oh, down. Such a slingshot. Perching up. Now, that is, uh, is that the turboed one? He can't see. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love that. See that? He couldn't <laughs> see. He couldn't see. So he had the brakes and Dave crashed in the back of him. Oh, that's a hoot. Oh, Dave just went past, but you can see just how much. Oh. So he's got an S15, then he's got the 180, then he's got an R32 as well. That's what I think anyway. So, oh, uh, that's, oh well, that's a hoot. Eh? <laughs> so much smoke was in that car. What are we looking at here? That's so, the belt? Uh, yeah, that's the belt. So it's a dry sump uh, motor, and I know that um, Jace has spat a dry sump belt so far uh, this weekend and obviously did the same thing. The car just shut down. No oil pressure will, will come from it. You know, it's not like a normal motor where the oil pump's inside. This is an external oil pump, uh, belt driven. And if something flicks up in there, a bit of rubber, anything like that can dislodge it and uh, pop it off. That doesn't turn, she'll shut down. 
He's got a great crew. They certainly know their way around that car. Let's hope that in the next two minutes they can get it fixed as we get ready for... <laughs> for <laughs> this. You can see, James cannot see, and Dave's like, <laughs> we, what are you doing? So let's have a look at the inside. So what's happening is, and it's the right thing, yet the wrong thing to do. McManaway's come in there, he can't see anything. He knows that there are actually people that are standing in front of him and yep. he's got to go through. He realised that I can't see anything, I've got to get on the brakes and uh, that's what caused that one there. So, Well, it looks like jason has got the car started. It's got a minute 35 to go, so good to see. Look, the laptop's going back in. Dry sump belts back on and uh, engine bonnet back down. So great to see the car back out there. Obviously, yeah, just such a shame uh, to have a dry sump belt spit itself like that. It looks like they've said, that, look, that's fine. One, one minute 27, you are done. They've stopped working on the car. They're going to get them the safety equipment back on, the door closed, and we'll get that car started back up the second half of their battle. It's a tricky thing, you know, like you, you want to have as much oil for these motors. It, it makes, obviously, it's key for them, especially with the Valvoline. Uh, and Jace Brown's um, Frankenstein. I think it's a 1UZ, eh? Supercharged 1UZ. Yep. But here we go. Dave Steadman gets the win over James McManaway. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, not the normal driver you would think of Ra Hader in that uh, warehouse parts S15. No, it is Sean Potros. He's in now car number three for the weekend. Obviously having a motor failure in his uh, actual pro car. And then their spare car, uh, having some electrical issues, and then now uh, being gifted Ra Hader's car. So very lucky there. What a what a gentleman of Ra um, to do that. And then obviously what a team to be able to pull a whole front end out and um, you know. They haven't had a lot of car. time to do it. They got in there. There's Jace Brown ten. there. Hour ten. An hour ten to do it. Crazy. Well, it's a, a great, beautiful. Sunny day here in Tamaki, Makoto, Auckland. This is a mechanical test lap in the warehouse auto parts S50. Sean Potros behind the wheel. <laughs> Look at that. No front guard on there. But it seems to be tracking pretty straight, which is a good thing. Obviously, they're wanting to make sure all of the... Uh... Oh, has he not? He's not got no steering. Oh, no, he's got his own doors on it too. Hey. Look, he's got the rear guard oh and my, the door you off. Oh, my. Right. And wow. Okay, what's happening here? There is he's an got, issue. Yeah, he's got no steering there. Well, where are they at? Because, uh, uh, you know where he's at? I can't get there. Couldn't get there in time. I'm going to do a skid. I think he's just confirmed he, he is out. Yeah. Not the best there for Sean Potros. He'll be so, so, so got gutted. No steering. Good to see uh, Rob and the team here from Valvoline, New Zealand. Always enjoying as well. And But uh, look, issues for... So yeah, I have no idea what's what going is, on here. He's He's got steering and one wheel only, maybe. Is that right? No, you can see that wheel turning. If oh, out. he'll be so gutted. Second in championship. This is his round. He dominated uh, last year. But, yeah, some serious issues going on for Sean Potros. Serious, serious issues going there. Obviously having no steering whatsoever. And it could be as, as easy as that, that just uh, just ran out of time and wasn't able to connect the steering wheel. Heartbreak for the team. They worked so hard. Of course, a special shout out to the Elite Performance crew and the Warehouse Auto Parts crew. Ra Hader, all of those guys there. Wow. Second half of the battle. It sucks to see, you know. Put, they've put a lot of time and effort into uh, trying to get the car up and running for them, but doesn't look like it is their, their weekend, Steve. But is it going to be the weekend of the tightest transport uh, yeah, war and rotary no, team? Yeah, got no steering. Look at that. The guys are trying to kick the wheels to uh, to get it around. So what do you, like, is that because there's a rod broken? or? Yeah, well, or, or where the actual steering column in, yeah, something when obviously Raz had a crash, something's broken, and they thought obviously they were able to fix it, but it doesn't look to be uh, the way. And obviously, Sean's already called his five minutes, so I guess they'll have a quick check. Yeah, we'll jump down with Stephen. Uh, Stephen, what's the what's the issue down uh, here, mate? Look, look it's, it's, it's basically unfit to run now. The, the boys have worked so, so hard on this car. When you think of the crew, but 
as you can see, they're trying to get the, 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 the car to go. I'm, I'm just going to quickly jump in, mate, real quick. Gutting, right? Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. racing? Yeah, that's motorsport. The team, I can't thank um, Raf for letting me, giving me the opportunity to drive this. Uh, his team um, getting stuck in, my team, yep. the whole 72 motorsport team, like, yeah, hands off to them, mate. Uh, all right, mate. We'll see you next time around. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Well, off we go. It's the second half of the battle between Jace Brown and NRD's Nico Reed. Straight in the first one we go. Quick stab on the gas we go for Jace Brown. Big angle. Yeah, look at Jace Brown. Knows he's got to uh, try and force a mistake here from Nico Reed. So, massive entry by Jace Brown. Nico Reed falling behind. is showing uh, how quick Jace Brown's monster is. Giving a bit of a gap there, but... Not the uh, cleanest lead run here from Jace Brown, but obviously a lot of aggression coming out. Be very frustrated after the car shut down on him in the uh, first battle, but I'd say the advantage will roll through to Nico Reed on that one. Well, we'll certainly go down and find out as these cars go side by side. They'll park up. We'll have a look and see some of the other battles we've got coming up. This is round two of the Valvoline D1NZ and a great day of drifting here at Mount Smart Stadium, the home of the Warriors. Nico Reed, the people's champion in the four in Rota S15, the Vitua Ties S13 of Jace Brown. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, look at the aggression there by Jace Brown. On throttle real early, pushing out to that second outside clip, tucking the nose right in nice and tight here. Nico Reed just sitting in the pocket, Nothing too crazy. Washed a little bit wide there. Got out to that outside zone, pulling a bit of a gap there, but big wheel drop there by Jace Brown. And once again, through that inside clip. So big deduction as well for Jace Brown on the lead run, even though he pulled quite a massive uh, gap there on Nico Reed. So let's see what the judges have to say on this one. Nico Reed with the win. There we go, the crowd will be happy. The people's champion, NRD's Nico Reed, takes the win, moving into the next round, and he's going to be going up against some guy that's pretty damn good. Oh. Okay, hey boys, cool. Nico Reed. Nice to see you back, buddy. How's it, Steve? Yeah, having a good time out there. It's quite a tough battle there with um, Jace Brown, but um, it's racing, eh? It is racing, but you go through, so go get it again. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Cheers, says Nico Reed. He's going up against Fanger Dan Woolhouse next as we get ready for our next one of the day. Mitch Lana out there. Yeah, good to see Mitch starting to get a bit more comfortable in the uh, Toyota Galore's uh, E90, A90 Supra. I never know if these things, they're so awesome though, but he's starting to get a little bit more seat time. He can really start to show his skill. Very skillful driver is Mitch. Uh, Drives a lot in Australia. So that one there is, he's accepted the right to have the lap because he should have gone up against Sean Potros. So I see Stevens down there with Jace Brown. Hard luck story. Mate, not what you wanted, right? Last last time out, you had you had your issues this time around. What was the real issue? Uh, so we chucked a dry sump pump out. We snapped one yesterday in qualifying, and today it was just um, not quite aligned or the tension wasn't quite right. But welcome back, Nico Reed, Shot bro. <laughs> like, you put on a hell of a chase, and... Um, yeah, we were hooked, pretty hooked up. So, um, yeah, just massive. And, um, yeah, really stoked to be part of that. So, bit of a shame, but it's motorsport, isn't it? Yeah, like, but let's, let's, let, mate, let's look on the bright side. Valvoline have come to the party, and they're part of your team now. How cool is that? Oh, I'm so glad we're running the good lubricant, man. Like, we've absolutely tested this engine this weekend, running it dry, and cut a filter last night. I was just amazed at how good it just held together. The Even though we've got minimal pressure, having it in there as a lubricant, it's just unreal what it can do. Well done, mate. We'll see you next time around. Here we go. More battles. Let's roll. More battles. And, of course, this is Michael Thorley in the Vertex NZ RB30 powered 180. He's going up against Scotty D. Scotty Dinsale in the real estate with Pauline Dinsale. John Atwood C33 Laurel Carmo parts car. He's supposed to be in a BMW this weekend. Couldn't get it done, but he's out there with the C33. Let's go. Yeah, here we go. Michael Thorley <coughs> entering nicely into that first and second outside zone. Yeah, a little bit twitchy there, Steve, as he came through there. Scotty D just sitting back a little bit in that big old Laurel. Very shallow for Scotty D, trying to gain back that proximity. Yeah, you did right there, but look at that by Thorley. Good driving, not dropping a wheel there. Putting the car out nice and wide to open the door so Scotty can come right up on the inside, but just doesn't seem to have the drive that Michael Thorley's car has, and look at that. 
big wall tap to finish the run. <laughs> oh, wow. Big oh, wall tap. He's not going to be the flavour of the month. He's just moving straight into a new car for the next round. One that he's oh. bought. He's borrowed that car and he's beating it up. Well, you'd be blown away with, I guarantee you, that rear guard will just pop back out and, you know, they could cable tie the bumper back up and she'd be good to go. Oh, look, is that a strap there? It is too. <laughs> it's already been like that. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, yeah, no doubt the uh, guys on the ground will pull that off and uh, sort things out for them. Well, let's see if how they go again. So there's the checking the bash bar, I think, on Scotty Dinsdale, C33 Lorel. Well, that's what those bash bars are there for, Steve, you know, to, to, to actually take a, a bit of the brunt. Concrete jungles like to give it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're talking, you know, 100 mils, and you can near take the whole rear quarter out of your car or do that perfect line and just scrape the wall, so. Well, it goes down to the hands of Launchmaster Willie as he sends them full send down the front straight here. A Valvoline acceleration zone. Hey, look at that rear bash bar on Scotty's car, just near dragging on the ground, but nice wide line there from Scotty, holding that big Laurel right out onto the concrete wall as he pushes it now out to this outside zone, really leaving the door open for Michael Thorley to come up on the inside. Now, as the chase car, you are allowed to drop a wheel over those ripple strips. That was allowed to keep that proximity. But look at this from Scotty D, just a nice big wide line there for uh, Michael Thorley to try and come up on the inside. Good bit of battling there. As they come through to first, Scotty D beating up C33. As we get ready to welcome our next driver up, we're going to have a look at the who takes the win in this battle. But first, the Repco replay. Hey, look at that entry there, beautiful. Exactly what the judges want to see. Good commitment on throttle, nice and early. Bit of a bobble there too. Uh, I did miss from Michael Thorley as he came through that uh, outside section. Really shallow here, trying to catch up. Obviously not matching the angle that um, Scotty D has in the Laurel. As they come through the centre section, Scotty doing a good job here, not throwing a lot of angle, then rotating the car and trying to do that nice wide big arc, uh, filling all the outside clips to finish the section off. So, yeah, not a bad run there from uh, Scotty D for a lead as well. We'll go down and find out who the judges are going to send through into the next round. Which way is it going to go? Look, they're still scoring there. And this one will be to go up against the person who qualified in third place in the Coastal Sparring Pool, S14, Geordie Cole. Will it be Michael Thorley? Is it going to be Scotty Dinsdale? Here we go. And it's going to be two strikes to Michael Thorley. Michael Thorley goes through, taking the win. He'll face Geordie Cole in the top 16. Which means that we're ready for our next battle of the day out of Mondor, New Caledonia, sponsored by NZKW, driving the 2JZ Toyota Super 86. It's Jeremy Slammett versus the Reed and Harrison Performance S15. Yeah, look, nice entry there by Jeremy. Oh, no, not again. Third time this weekend. I was just about to say, Stocky has had a bit of a bad luck this weekend, hitting the concrete wall and did it again. Third time. Third time. He hit it with the front, he hit it with the back. Now he's gone with the front again. Come on, slow down, or you're going to hit him. Yeah, oh, such a shame there for Stocky. Wow, did it this morning? Uh, did it this morning or last night? Did it yesterday? Yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, front end yesterday. Oh, sorry, back end yesterday morning. I wonder if something's got to be going on. Like you, you bind. This doesn't happen. Yeah, look, I watch here. If I Stocky throws it in. He's not, is he on throttle? He's on throttle. I oh, gets out of the throttle. He did it again. I spoke to him last night, late last night, and uh, and I said, what's going on? And he said, Steve, I just, it's a split second thing. And when you're saying it's so uncomfortable to go, I need to, I'm going to crash my oh, car. On throttle, that. on throttle, got off throttle. Got off throttle. That there would have been a precision line right there. He would have scraped the rear bumper all the way around. Now, yes, quick split second decision in his head. I'm going in. I'm going to smack the back of the car up. And it's so hard to figure that judgment out. But 
Yeah, he, he decided just then to get off the throttle and yeah, you can't slow the car down. The car's got a lot of momentum and it's so hard to just slow them down once you're sideways and into drift. I can tell you, I uh, crashed into a car in Australia at like 180 k's sideways. There's nothing you do, you're just a passenger until you come to a grinding halt. Well, bar of the world for Alex Stocky Griffin. He's going to be sending that back to RHP Reed and Harrison Performance. Maybe strapping on a couple more limitless tyres. All right, well, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's come back. More D1NZ action. Mount Smart Stadium after the break. Welcome back to our international viewers. It's the doubling D1 International Drifting Championship, Mount Smart Stadium, New Zealand. The home of the Warriors. Great crowd on hand here. To see New Zealand's best drifters. And we're back out with the forklift. I've been on that thing for most of the weekend because of that man right there. Alex Stocky Griffin, so unfortunate for Stocky. Look at the damage to that car. Certainly a lot of work to do for Stocky and his crew. It's actually a big part, Steve, that actually you just don't see the actual critical damage. Uh, obviously outside looks like, yeah, it's a little bit scratched and and um, done, but the whole subframe, no doubt, probably has been pushed in. You know, the arms have all been bent and, and twisted and it's, yeah, it's a real shame. Stocky's been in it, yeah, I think I've, I say it so many times. Uh, he took me for my first ever time in a drift car and I was just hooked from then on. I uh, used to have an orange uh, A31 Safira and wow, that thing was uh, so cool. So it's been in the game for a long, long time. That probably would have been in, uh, I have to say, probably yeah, 2003, 2004. Wow. And uh, yeah, good to see him obviously back in it now, but yeah, shame, again, just pushing the limits and, uh, yeah, that split-second decision and um, put it in the wall. So, yeah, I know, I know the pain. I've done it a few times myself. We are coming in so committed, but, yeah, not ideal. Well, we'll get that car up on the back of the trailer and uh, we'll be ready to get our next car out on track. You are locked and loaded into round two of Valvoline D1NZ from the mighty Mount Smart Stay in the concrete jungle that's claimed yet another victim. Alex Griffin takes out the wall again on that initiation stage that we talked about with Cole Armstrong at the top of the show. I think that one of the biggest surprises he may, may disagree is uh, Alex Perlier in the Jays Racing Tour Performance Tire LS2000 because uh, he got pole position, took P1. Was that a surprise to you? Uh, hey, look, it, it was definitely a surprise to come here, you know, my, my second round of pro. Uh, however, this track does suit my car and my driving style a lot, so uh, it, it's, it's made a, it, it's a good match, you know, and I'm happy to, to be where I am. Yeah, mate, we're pretty stoked because you've come all the way from the, the land of uh, the Garden City, they say, Christchurch. I mean, this must mean a lot to you, just getting on doing that. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I mean, I've got a lot of people and friends supporting me, you know, like, there's no way I could afford to do this without them. I'm, I'm, I'm here because of them, and everyone's here. I've got the biggest crowd of my supporters from Christchurch, here today, so thanks to everyone you know who's putting their hands in and getting me here. 
uh, now it's my job to put on a show. Yeah, we've well, got to put on a show against Kurt Blackie, who's driving uh, Fangadan's VF Commodore, the, the big boy. Uh, do you think you're better suited against in this battle? Uh, hey, look, when you have two cars like this that are like so different, you know, it can go each way. A big, long car like that's nice and smooth. Uh, I think it'll be pretty crack up on the TV having a tiny little S2000 and a big, big Commodore next to each other. So that should be fun. All right, mate, best of luck. All right, this, here's the, here is the bad news. If you turn around here, Tony, that's Alex Griffin's car's out, gone. Jeremy Slammett will advance. We're going to talk to Jeremy. This is, this is just what, what, what this place does to you, just bashes cars above. But this, where, where is he? Where is he? He's right behind me. Okay, right, no, I, I got a director in my ear yelling at me. It's quite hilarious. He's, he, he's also, he's also uh, not a bad bloke. Well, here, look at the smile. Look at the smile, man. I, I, all the way from New Caledonia, Jeremy Slammett, and uh, you do the job, you don't have to do a second run. Did you see what happened? Um, not really. I just went, like, initiation, and I'll just, like, throw 100% of my driving, and then I saw that r red flag, so I've just stopped and see him crash, so I hope he's okay. All right, so uh, how are you finding the Super going? Uh, pretty good so far. We've got a lot of trouble first round, like, a big engine trouble, and now we've fixed it, so it's kind of, kind of good now. Yeah, so you advance. Uh, how how strong do you think this car is for this track? I think it's it's kind of the good setup. Um, I'm a bit st struggling between third and second gear, but otherwise still okay that the, the chassis is very fast here. Mate, go get ready for top 16. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> is that is that a happy man or what? We're getting ready for this next battle between uh, our top qualifier, Alex Pelia, and, of course, uh, Kurt Blackie in that, in that Century Batteries VF Commodore of Fangadans, which he, we said to him. So uh, here we go, lads, top 16. Who's going to survive, I think, is the big question. Well, it is the top 16. Alex Pelea is going to go up against Kurt Blackie next. Troy Jenkins will take on Adam Campbell. And Jason Farron will go up against Connor Halligan, with Ben Jenkins taking on Mitch Lana. Thangadan Woolhouse up against Nico Reed. Cody Pullenbury versus Dave Steadman. Jody, uh, Jordy Cole versus Michael Thorley. Taylor James going up against New Caledonia's Jeremy Slammett. That is the battle tree. That is what's going to take us all the way down to a round winner here for round number two of the Valvoline D1NZ Pro Championship and we are seeing the bag scorching the Century Batteries Castro Gas Tech Services VF Holden Commodore was well still as Fangadans but today piloted by Tauranga's Kurt Blackie going up against the Jays Performance Talk Performance S2000 of Alex Belair it's the big dog versus the little motor and the P1 qualifier Oh, this is going to be interesting here, Steve. That car of Alex's is so nimble and quick. Uh, watched him out there in practice as well. Really aggressive driving, loving it. Uh, really loving watching him out there. And obviously, Kurt Black, he's starting to get comfortable. And uh, fingers come all. So let's see how he goes here. That, can he keep that big monster right up on the door of that little S2000? It's such a quick car. Look, right out by the wall. Beautiful there by Alex. What an insane first part of his lead run. Opening the door for Kurt Blackie to try and suck up on the door. Kurt doing a good job. Look at the size of that VF Commodore. Nice line and transition through that centre section there by Alex. Sitting in the car real wide out there on the outside club. But look at that of Kurt Blackie right up on the inside door. A little bit of a bobble there by Alex. Wow. Nearly shutting it down, and that could have been bad. Great commitment by Kurt Blackie. I mean, he's one person over the time. It's like he doesn't always commit to things, and right there he was like, no, nah, I'm on my place. It's almost like he's found a home in that Commodore. He is, eh? Look at this by Alex. Nice initiation here on throttle, nice and early. Kurt just playing a bit of catch-up, but look at that. A little bit of a shallower line there by Kurt, catching back up, getting that proximity, transitioning. Now look at the difference between the S2000 and the VF Commodore in that transition. Such a snappy little uh, pocket rocket that thing is. They come through this centre section, not a lot of angle through there, exactly what the judges want to see, and then bang, both on throttle. Look at that. But then Alex having a few bobbles. He obviously tagged the wall somewhere, and then look through here. Shuts it down right as they uh, go over the finish line. Oh, he, got, he certainly got out of the way. Let's go and ride on board with uh, Inspire You Media's drone, George, the pilot for the D1NZ. Alex Pelier is called a five minute competition. Yeah, something's gone down, but look at that. What an absolute stellar lead run. Real wide. Missed that in a clip, though, I have to say. 
Transitions through the inside here. Kurt doing a good job sitting in the pocket. And then right here. Oh, he clipped the outside rear wall just there. Didn't see that. And then as you come down here, wow. Nearly shuts it down before the finish line. Woo. Did what, very well to hold that. What an incredible lead line that was able to also create an amazing chase. Oh, you know we talk about this all the time, Steve. But here we go. What has we got? Steven, how's our uh, big strong man Kurt Blackie down there? Yeah, well, you did say Kurt Blackie was flexing. I actually, I know he misses Wolfie, the GT86, but you look like you were having so much fun. Yeah, I feel right at home in this old girl, eh? Like, really um, disappointed to not have Wolfie here, but what a backup car, eh? Like, hats off to Fanger for giving me this ultimate weapon. Um, <laughs> she's ready to rock and roll, party, whatever, and um, now nah, I'm really feeling it, and... I love this old old girl, eh? She's she's awesome. Hey, talk to me about this cap drift corp. Oh, you know, uh, shit. We might be joining the team. Oh, you might be joining the team. I, I, I can't say anything, but can, can you just explain to me drift corp? Because I got a director that's going bonkers in my ear. Yeah, drift corp's like a real old school Wangarei um, drift drift team. Um, way back before I even started, you know, like, you know, you're talking 15 plus years ago. Um, and, so yeah. to, to think that you could be, become a member of an old school team, how, how important would that be? Yeah, I, I don't know the regulations and rules around it, but um, how I would love to be a part of it. All right, mate. Uh, you look like you're having fun. I know it's not, but you're certainly throwing it out there. So keep throwing it, and he's taking a five. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Well, uh, JT, the Thank first Drift Corp champion, he's upstairs. Well, I think we should have a chat to him. You know what? We're from Tauranga. We like tying a rep when it comes to drifting. Drift Corp is it's Whangarei hard. It's northern, northern hard. Kakite to Kurt Blackie. If you're going to go to Drift Corp, you can move to Whangarei. Yeah, mate. <coughs> I actually wore one of those hats too, I have to say, when uh, I was at the last round of the Supercars at Pukekohe. What car were you driving? I was driving that car. How good is it? Uh, it's, yeah, it's all right. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not too bad. It's a big girl and, uh, and and had a lot of uh, development in there. Fang is a clever guy and got a great team behind him. And obviously, yeah, to have that as just a, a backup car sitting there is phenomenal. So, Kurt will no can, doubt can be... You, can you talk to me through what is the difference when you're actually behind the wheel between a turbo car and a Monster LS? Well, that there's still theoretically kind of like a turbo car. So it's a belt-driven uh, Vortex supercharger. So as the motor revs more, the supercharger turns more, creates more boost. So... Um, still a little bit of lag in it. Like, obviously, yes, it's a V8 power uh, and got a lot of ponies and a lot more down low, but still got to get it up into the RPM. So when I did drive it, I also noticed, yeah, you've still got to drive it kind of like the six-cylinder in the RV and uh, keep it up in the revs. But when it's there, well, it's all there with a whole lot of punch. So let's just check this out on the Repco, Repco replay here. Alex comes through this centre section. Nowhere near as Kurt Blackie, and look at the transition. Wow, way too wide. Look at the wing. Clips the rear outside zone there. And that's why we had the bumper fall off. So did he did he clip the wheel and, and, and also break something? Because well, so there's like a curb there. There's a curb Yes, there. there is. So I placed some of those blocks down there the other day, and I wanted to put them in a certain way. You know what, we'll worry about that later on. Here comes our next battle. They're uh, going to get back out. Five-minute competition called by Alex Pellier, but here comes the Carter tyre service. North Shore Toyota Parts. This one here is the, this is the orange one, which is Troy Jenkins. Is it orange? I thought it had. Is that the different colour? I thought his, oh, OK, you're right. He does. He's got the orange stripes. We have yeah, orange got stripes, the yellow. So that's the Carter Tyres uh, Pukakawi North Shore Toyota Parts, 2JZ Power Toyota GT86. And he is going up against Adam Camplin in the Roofing Industries Unlimited Custom Partmaster 2JZ Powered Mazda FC RX-7. The same engine. Look at the differences in car. One's an RX-7. The other one's a Toyota GT86. It goes down to Launchmaster Willie, who pushes the button, and we will send them down the front straight. Round two of the Valvoline Z1NZ, it's, it's uh, Troy Jenkins who leads. Yeah, Troy throwing it in nicely, a little bit of hesitation there by Adam, a uh, bit of a bobble too, chasing behind there. Troy doing a good clean job here, look, rotating the car to angle, oh, look at that, Adam Camplin, boom, pulls out, right there, shuts the car down, drives off track, so uh, the no doubt the spotters will be telling Troy in the air, just finish the lap mate, get nice and comfy, get clean. Nice clean run through this section, and look at that, Troy uh, 
finishing that section quite nice there. So obviously some sort of uh, mode of failure for Adam. Troy's going to get the surprise of his life. A lot of the time you don't actually realise there's an issue. Troy drives up and goes, hang on, that's supposed to be the car that's behind me. You can see the team down there um, checking in the window to find out what's going on. We'll get the information as soon as we can. Of course, that's a Joel and Kenny. These are our couple of our marshals here with the D1NZ. Kenny Ruddle, you'll know him from being the, the voice prior. Yeah, that's it. Some sort of issue has gone on whether they're blowing a gearbox or no. Seems to still be rolling. So there's a Repco replay here. Troy initiates nicely on throttle, nice and early, pushing out to that first outside clip. Tucking the nose in here. Real nice and smooth there by Troy. Always a good technical driver here, pushing really wide. And then look at that, bam. Adam Kaplan shuts it down, drives straight off the track, uh, forfeiting the last part of that battle. And there's uh, the end part of Troy's run here. Look at that, nice and smooth, good throttle, good throttle, I might add, sorry. Well, second uh -huh. half of the battle, and then yeah. lighting straight up side by side, so. And that's something that gets in your head, Steve. Like, okay, what happened to his car? Why'd he shut down? Do I need to leave a gap? Do I need to be on him? This is concrete rounds. Anything could happen. Let's see what the Roofing Industries FCRX7 can do as they fire it down the front straight here. Adam Camplin, off he goes. Yeah, Troy being a bit cautious on this one, not knowing if Adam's car is going to shut down mid-drift and obviously uh, have a bit of a coll collision, but looks like everything's holding together here for Adam. Troy doing a good job, just sitting back a little bit, not getting too close or getting caught out in any pockets. They transition now into that outside zone. Standing on it is Adam Kaplan coming into the last part of the uh, section there. The car seems to have held together, so whether or not he had the, like, the gearbox pop out or, or something like that, Steve. <laughs> oh, classic. Oh, we have a good bit of fun up here, but here's a Repco replay. Look at that initiation there by Adam. Nice, clean run. Not really as wide, probably, as Troy's lead run. Pretty smooth through this centre section. It's getting to that inner clip. Rotating nicely. Once again, not pushing probably as wide as Troy. And then definitely a lot tighter through the teardrop through here. As they come through this uh, inside switch. Then rotating, getting back out on the wall. Once again, yeah, a little bit of a bobble there by Adam. Uh, trying to push back out onto the wall. Troy just, you know, just right, you know, just there as well. So. One of the main things I noticed in that replay that came through was just, and you mentioned it too, how shallow Camp, uh, Camplin was, which gives him speed, gives him a bit more. Yeah. Uh, look, one, two, three, Jenkins. Troy Jenkins, he's going through. Let's go down to Stephen McIver. All right, Troy Jenkins, uh, P8 last time out, uh, looking to go one better today. Yeah, that was um, unfortunate. So he obviously spun or something behind Had an ignition me. issue. Oh, really? Well, that's, uh, that sucks. It sucks to win that way, but hey. The Carter's Tire Service uh, NST Parts GD86 is just going awesome today so far, especially in this heat. So uh, bring on uh, the next run, top eight. Hey, just quickly, the badges on both these cars today, fire service badges. Can you explain why, why they're on the badges? Yeah, we put the fire service badges on just to show our, um, our respect for all the, uh, all the guys that have done it hard. And unfortunately, um, some, of the, some of those guys have... have an, uh, the two boys in Mirror White. Like you know, but... It's uh, just a just a token of our appreciation for all the work that they do. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, so just a reminder, of course, sadly, our, our first responders are doing such a good job, but we lost two young firefighters who have families in Murawai, and these boys and a number of the cars have stickers on their cars showing their respect. All right, battle coming up. Perla is out, and here comes Blackie as well. Well, as the father of a firefighter who's in the New Zealand Army, I can certainly appreciate their work and the efforts that go through with um, so many people in the services. Uh, certainly a lot of people struggling with uh, with what's going on in Aotearoa. But uh, we, life obviously will continue. And today it's going to continue in the form of the Valvoline D1NZ as we see the second half of the battle between Wolfie, that is, Kurt Blackie, and our pole sitter from yesterday, Alex Pulier. There's the Jay's performance, torque performance, 600 horsepower, F20 C2 litre Honda going to come through with it. We'll find out. Kurt Blackie, it's your job to lead. Yeah, look, nice clean, clean entry there by Kurt Blackie. Not doing anything special getting out into the, the uh, wall there. Having to rotate the car quite heavily into that inside clip, but pushing wider here. Alex not really getting right up on the door like I thought he would, but look at that. Kurt holding wide. Miss that inner clip a little bit there. Coming through the centre section, I, I guess he's possibly thinking he's got a slight advantage, but still wanting to push really hard here is Kurt Blackie. 
in that VF Commodore, but a good good drive there also by Alex in behind. Obviously repairing whatever uh, damage they thought had happened and able to hold things together. The first Honda to ever get P1 in uh, the D1NZ. Oh, it was cool to see. Watch this little thing. So nimble. Look at how it rotates rotates to angle so quickly. Could, yeah, tucking it in quite tight here, having to rotate more angle to get to that inner clip, slowing the car down a little bit. Getting back on throttle, staying nice and wide. Probably a little bit wide here, wanting to tuck the nose in just to that inside clip a little bit more. But Alex sitting right behind him in the pocket, nothing too close. And then as they uh, finish the last part of the section, both cars, a lot of angle. I think Alex even touched the wall again on the uh, exit of that run, so... This will be an interesting one here, Steve. Real interesting to see. Which way is it going to go? Wow. wow. Kurt Blackie gets the win. Oh, Stephen, give him a pat on the back from me. That's good oh, okay. driving here. Okay, I'll give him a pat. Just lean forward, lean forward. Pat on, pat on the back, 2-1. Two, two, so, I, uh, congratulations, mate. That just makes it all the world worthwhile, right? Oh, oh my God. This, is, this, this <laughs> car's insane. And um, when you're feeling on form, you're feeling on form, and you feel like you can go all the way. So, uh, let's take this old girl right to the top, eh? Just don't upset Wolfie. No, 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 we've got Wolfie played on the front, so we're all good there. All right, buddy. Let's just quickly talk to the uh, number one qualifier, Kurt Blackie. I don't think I've seen Kurt Blackie that excited in a long, long time. Mate, what it's you and the wall, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, haven't touched the wall like all day today, all day yesterday, and I'm just railing it now, eh? But that's all good. <laughs> all righty, buddy. Well, thanks for being part of this. Thanks for making the effort. And, uh, oh, what was that? A reflector. Yeah, it's you, a piss teller. <laughs> you touched the wall. Go get him next time out. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Cole Armstrong, did you notice what how excited Kurt Blackie is? Like, this car is amazing, this car is incredible. That car is Fanger's third one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think the, the difference is Kurt's coming from a... They're quite twitchy, those little Lady Sixes. The, the wheelbase is a lot shorter than that, that Commodore. I think even my G36 Skyline, uh, the wheelbase is slightly longer again on it. So a car like that, they just, you, you have a little bit more time, a little bit more control, just like we've got here. Jason Farron in this uh, 831 Safiro. Oh, Safiro, come on, Cole, unbelievable. Come on, Cole, keep it re keep R31 it R31 Barrow Wagon. Jeez, I can't believe I just said that. What a break. It was fun. one letter that flows on. I've, I've done that for almost every every run for the last 10 years. 580 kilowatts, 800 horsepower, barrel power, the R31 Nissan, Skyline Wagon, he's from Melbourne, Victoria, Jason Fair and keeping it reet. That car's, it's a cool car. It sounds so sick, because you've got a real heavy anti-lag on it, which is definitely not good on the motor, but man, it sounds pretty cool. And uh, he's a good peddler as well. I've seen him definitely step up to the challenge. Um, and yeah, giving it to the Kiwi boys. Well, Jason Obers Builders, 027 new home on the side of our Pro Sport champion from 2022. Can he take out a scalp from Australia? This is an Anzac battle. Connor Halligan going to go and take it for the Kiwis. Yeah, here we go, Jason Farrah. Big entry there on the wagon, but look at that. Connor right up on the inside there. Now this is our Pro Sport champion stepping up into Pro. Loves these concrete rounds. Look at that transition from Connor right up on the inside. Oh, a little bit of a bobble there. Jason holding that big wagon nice and wide. Really opening the door up for Connor to try and tuck up on the inside as they push her into the last part of the section here. Look at how much smooth, smooth, smooth through there, right in that big wagon. Oh, listen to that noise. Yeah, that's, that's a real aggressive anti-lag on that thing. But good drive for the probably the first section eh, of uh, for Connor uh, in the chase there. Let's have a look at the uh, the replay for these two drivers. Yeah, look, Connor doing a real nice job through here. Jason probably tucking a little bit tight here. Connor maybe nearly got himself caught out. Transitions nicely through the centre section. Probably had a little bit of a bobble because look, all of a sudden there was a bit of a gap there. Jason was able to keep a nice fluid line through there. Kind of did drop back a little bit. <clears throat> they transitioned nicely through here before they jumped back onto the wall. And look at that, that barrow wagon just sitting there nice and smooth all the way around that uh, last outside arc there. So good run by both those lads. Second half of the battle time. See the uh, intensity in the eyes. Oh yeah, you get intense there, Steve, you're in the zone. 
You're well and truly in the zone, I'll tell you that much. Rears are rising, we go again. Connor Halligan, your turn to lead in the S14, 1.5 Jay-Z. Look at that entry there. Be nice entry there, but look at this from Jason Barrett. Sitting right on the rear quarter is he in that big R31 wagon. But look at that, Connor Halligan, real nice lead run here. Beautiful, nice and wide there. Jason really having to swallow and catch up. Bang, big two wheels off there. Caught himself out, got a little bit too close there. But oh no, rotation there by Connor Halligan. What did he do? That was a stellar lead run till that moment. The pressure. One turn to go, and we've seen it so many times, and Connor just absolutely thumping the gas pedal. He's going to head back off the track, but it's going to see a massive advantage and probably the win to Jason Perrin. Yeah, definitely. Hey, look at this. This is good driving. I love seeing this. This is a, a track that you get really excited. See, so transition into that outside zone. Connor really throwing that S14. Getting into that outside zone. Now, right here, a little bit of a bobble by both drivers. So now, it was that Connor forcing Jason, didn't really have anywhere to go. Jason was real tied up on the inside. And then watch this rotation here, like, what? Was that on and off the gas, though? Like, Steve, like, what? How it's did like that like, It almost looked uh, very similar to what we saw with with uh, Alex Stocky, Gr Stocky Griffin as he came out, because it looked like he came off and then on the gas. Yeah, I think I think this might be an easy win here for, for Jason to move on. Once again. Three green strikes to Jason Ferrin. Race, Jason gets the thumbs up, keeping it right. So the barrel wagon is back after being uh, fixed up. How bad was it this week? Uh, it was a pretty hectic couple of weeks from the first round uh, down at Hampton Down. So we lifted ahead with a bit of overboosting issue. And uh, thanks to the legend Nick Bogart from Franklin Engineering, he pulled this motor down in one week. It got the whole thing rebuilt with a Nido Forge bottom end. And all back together, tuned by NDT Developments. And uh, she's absolutely singing. Was there no touch out there? No touch? All clean? It was all clean. Just was so close. But <laughs> great, uh, great chase by Connor. I was ready to stick it to him because um, he's been so consistent. It's great to see him up from uh, Pro Sport. Uh, yeah, ready to keep sending it, mate. <laughs> all right. Keep it reading the barrel wagon. We'll talk to Connor Halligan, who was the Pro Sport champion last year. And he's come out of this battle with a huge smile on his face. Mate, He's laugh Why are you laughing? Oh, uh, you know, if you don't laugh, you'll cry, right? So, no, no. <laughs> no. Hell, hell, hell of a battle. Your lead was really strong. I mean, well, my lead, I spun out, but my chase, my chase was good. I was happy with that. Um, yeah, the lead, just coming back through the smoke there, just stacked a bit too much angle on in the transition and, you know, dumped the clutch and got into it. But, no, no, I went round, so. Just, I know, it was, it was a strong start. Let's put it that way. But just quickly, for those pro sport drivers that think they can step up, how big is the jump? <laughs> Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit of an adjustment, but I mean, there's a lot of good drivers in pro sports, so I think, you know, hopefully a few of the boys make the jump next year. And, yeah. All right, we'll see you in Taupo in about two and a half weeks. Right, mate. Thank you. Yeah, it is so good to see these guys stepping up. I've seen it for the last couple of years now, the, the, the development and the skill of these young fellas. Uh, they're not afraid to rub a bit of paint with the uh, big boys. He's another one of the, uh, well, you'd nearly call him a little bit of a veteran now, as uh, Ben Jenkins. He took the step up as well from Pro Sport. I think it was probably Pro Am back in those days there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Steve. I've got food all over yeah. my face. <laughs> Thanks, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to go up against a Supra. 2JZ versus 2JZ. Oh, this is going to be a good battle. Little Toyota versus damn there a limousine that Supra is huge hey, all right and look at this this is going to be a good battle because you know Ben is really competitive in that GD86 and uh, Mitch is here to prove a point so we'll see how they go well, on to the gas pedal it goes for Jenkins comes through slight correction well correction coming through as he gets ready to switch up back on the gas right on that line from the outside of the car but look at our Look at the chase driver just get squeezed out. Got to have commitment to come through and switch back up on through the link corner. We'll finish off the lap. Yeah, that's real nice driving by Mitch Lana. Just keeping a bit of distance. Keeping a bit of distance, but not pushing too hard. I've seen him many a time over the year. Really like to rub a few doors. And uh, good to see him just sitting back there a little bit. That was a good, clean uh, chase run. Obviously with a, a pretty stellar lead run there by Benny. 
Let's have a look at the uh, rep clay. Talk us through it, Cole. Yeah, nice initiation there by Ben. Pushing nice and wide, but look at Mitch just sitting right into that pocket. Not too many adjustments as they come through that inner clip there. Now they rotate nicely. Snap to get to that outside zone. Staying nice and wide here. Giving Mitch a good opportunity to really sit up on the door. Nice yellow switch through the centre section before they lay the throttle on. And look at that, Mitch setting up the car really nicely. Nearly wider than Ben, I might add, uh, to finish off the last part of that section. So, yeah, good, good chase run there by Mitch. Really starting to get comfortable in that. In that big, big wagon. Oh no, Steve, what have I done? But anyway, it's all right. Here we go, the next part of the battle with Mitch Lana leading out Ben Jenkins as he throws it into the first section. Oh, he's running really wide there. It was Mitch Lana grabbed it back. Ben doing a good job there, sitting right up inside the pocket here as they transition out to that outside zone. Pushing hard as Mitch in the lead there. Ben just sitting in behind here, not getting caught out through the centre section as he now wants to pounce right up onto that door of Mitch Lana as they come to the last part of the section. Look at Mitch stacking on the big angle, finishing that off with Ben Jenkins right on the door there. Holy, that was, a, that was a good bit of driving by both those boys. Good bit of driving. I don't know what I've done, Steve, but I've turned my TV off and I can't see anything. Dang it. That's all right. I'll try and fix all right, it. I'm well, pretty let's have a look at these. Uh, the <laughs> Repco replay as we see that beautiful A90 Supra. Look at the smoke coming off both of these cars. The two JZs under the bonnet, but look at how different the cars are. 857 on the side of the Jenkins Carter Toyota car. What did I kick? As we look at the uh, look at the angle as he comes through to finish. And we'll go back down the uh, He does really well, bar. eh, through that, through that last section. Uh, Mitch definitely stacking on a lot of angle there. I know Darren Kelly will definitely be talking to them. Uh, he's done a lot of setup with that car so far. So, yeah, really good to see how uh, both the lads uh, are feeling out there. Well, let's have a look at the result. Dane and Templeman, Joel Counter and Andrew Redwood. Two strikes to Mitch Lana. Mitch Lana is going through. So, Mitch... So much, two of the judges caught it and the one judge wanted it one more time. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Oh, incredible battle. I've been waiting years to drive with Ben. Uh, him and Phoenix actually sponsored me back home and I've been waiting to come over and drive with him and it was everything it was meant to be. I think we put on a show for the crowd, rubbed the back of the Toyota Glores A90 Super on that lead run then, trying to give it everything I got and obviously in the chase I tried to give it everything as well and it obviously paid off. Well done to Ben. Awesome battle. Hope we can drive again throughout the season. See you in the eight. Thank you. Let's just go quickly talk to Ben Jenkins because I know he, he wasn't taking his helmet off. I had this feeling that if he didn't take his helmet off, he thought it might be a one more time. Matt, he just said he was really looking forward to that battle. It was everything he wanted it to be. Uh, a, a few years now, a few years coming now. Mitch and I talking back and forth from across the ditch, but we said at the start, let's put on a show, and I think we just put on a damn good show there for our top 16 battle. But yeah, I, I put it all out there, left it all out there. So yeah, we'll, we'll go back happy. Just want to say a quick shout out. We're running a. Uh, the special sticker on the one screen here for our um, for our Murawai, Murawai firefighters. Um, a, a great thing that Jerry from Big Brown has printed for us for this weekend. So hearts go out to the family from the whole D1NZ family there for the Murawai victims and everyone across New Zealand that that's struggling right now. Uh, we hope you get back on your feet very very soon. Nice work, mate. See you. See you next time around Topo in a couple of weeks. All right, the first half of the battle tree. The left hand side is completed. We'll take a wee break and get on to the right hand side in just a moment. Live. This is Valvoline D1NZ. Well, it's the Valvoline Z1NZ National Drifting Championship, round number two of the Pro Championship at Mount Smart Stadium. There is a three-time New Zealand Drift King. It is Fangin and Woolhouse ready to battle. Of course, who is he going to battle? None other than the people's champion, Nico Reed. Nico Reed, four rounds in a row. He won. No other driver has done it in the tightest transport. Four in rotary. RB30 S15 
That is a stunning car. That is a great driver. Luxury Sport's been a name on the side of Nico Reed for many, many years. Oh, it is indeed, Steve. It's, it's so good to see Nico back out. Obviously, been working hard. Titus Transport as well. NZKW, Casper Transmissions. Man, this, this, this lad's been around. Penrite, that was a, a big yeah. sponsor he had for a long time. AWS, he's always been doing stuff. For and it's Nico. cool. Like, all of a sudden, he's back in the sport. The sponsors love it. They, they're here. They're supporting him. Same with the family. Now, this is going to be a cool battle. Because I know Nico can drive like a real animal. He definitely used to do that. Whether or not now he's he's got three kids under the belt, he might be a little bit more tamer. But uh, but he's got to go up against this guy here, Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, he's, look at his sleepy dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a good man, eh? Good man. Had a lot of awesome battles with both of these drivers. Also, there's a lot of people tuning in, some of, some of them via motorsport.tv. Thanks for coming along, choosing D1NZ today. Well, there is indeed, Steve. It's, uh, it was something we even talked about, you know, it's been going 20 years. We, we caught up with Jarius, he was the first ever D1NZ champion in 2003. That's incredible. You know, they had, if that, 400 horsepower, locked off, cut springs. And he's, uh, look, we've known him for being uh, the first New Zealand, no longer really, well, New Zealand's always going to be home. Japan, that's the place he's spending most of his time. Yeah, has been over there, part of the uh, Power Vehicles team with Andy Gray, uh, looking after all of the yeah, cars in Japan that go to Ibisu. Obviously himself competing in J2, um, and obviously then he was sort of explaining to us how now there's now a new tier, J3, uh, where they really put a lot of parameters on horsepower and tyre size and all those sorts of things. So. Well, welcome back. It's the Babylon D1NZ National Drifting Championship, and here is two of the greatest drivers in the D1NZ. One is a three times champion. The other one is the people's champion, foreign rotor on the side, Titus Transport. It is Mr. NRD, Nico Reed, RB30 power plant on that Nissan S15. The Tunnifar returns to the D1NZ, but he's going to do it in the way of taking on that Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D. That is a monster, and that is a three times champion. Castro, century batteries on the side. Fanger Dan Woolhouse, one person that Nico would always like to beat is going to be Fanger Dan. Well, let's see what they do as they get released from the line. It's the RTR Mustang. Nico trying to get the jump. Off we go down the front straight, Mount Smart. This is going to be a battle of the ages. It is indeed, Steve. Nice entry there. Real smooth from Fanger. Look at that, still just a lot of power and grip uh, by that Mustang, just pulling a bit of a gap there on Nico. Nico, when I talked to him, was really blown away with how fast these cars still were. Now look at Nico taking a real shallow line, trying to catch back up to Finger, close that door there, but look at this. Just that skill on Finger down that 900 horsepower is just pulling away from Nico Reed there. You know, it'll be a, a, a real big shock. Nico's been away for probably, what, two, three years now um, to step back up and just be like, wow, these cars are fast. Well, let's have a look at this Repco replay as they fire it down. Look at the difference between these two cars. Yeah, Nico up on the inside there, trying to obviously catch that proximity, but look at that. Fanger just lays on the throttle and the car just wants to drive away there. Both on the same sort of uh, tyre, 265 semi-slick. Fanger real wide here. Look at Nico really cutting the track here, trying to catch back up. On Fanger, Fanger just with that stellar line, driving through here with minimal angle, then rotating right out onto that outside zone. And look at that, just pulling a massive gap on uh, Nico. But that there can also be a hindrance for him in this next run. When Nico's out front, Fanger's got to slow that car up to sit in behind. Well, let's see what Nico Reed, the people's champion, can do as he gets ready to throw the S15 around with Fanger down where he has a chase. Yeah, that's it, Steve, but look already. See that with a little bit of a bobble from Fanger, really trying to sit that Mustang in behind Nico. Nico's just a little bit slower there. Getting the car real nice and wide there is Nico opening the door for Fanger. Fanger with a little bit of a bobble in behind, trying to slow that big Mustang down. 
as they come into the last part of the section here. But look at that finger, nice and wide. Now wanting to get right up on the door of Nico Reed. What a drive by both of these gentlemen out there right now. Good to see. Remember when you could watch a battle and you'd know exactly who won? That's not the case these days, is it? Nah, it's definitely a, a lot harder. But as we just seen here, man, there's a lot more uh, speed involved here. Here's uh, the Repco replay here of Nico Reed out front. Look at that. A little bit of a wobble there from Fanger in behind. Nice wide line there by Nico Reed as he tucks the nose into that inner clip. Drives away here a little bit from Fanger as he rotates into this outer zone. Real good line here by Nico Reed. Sitting wide, Fanger did the same. A little bit of a shallower line trying to catch that uh, proximity back up. As he comes through the center section, quick snappy switches before bang, they're back onto the uh, outside zone with a lot of throttle and uh, staying in it as they cross the finish line. But good, good lead run there, I had to say, by Nico Reed and uh, pretty good. Uh, chase run there by Finger Dan. I think it's going to come down to uh, who's done the, the least amount of mistakes. One, two, three. Finger Dan gets the win. Good catch up the lads there, Stephen. Yeah, mate. Uh, Finger Dan. I mean, uh, same spot a couple of times in the back part of the circuit. Steering issues? Yeah. Um, I'm fi I'm manhandling this thing, eh? It's um, it's not right after that qualifying pass last night. Um, but I'll just deal with it, mate. We're um, we're here for the big show and. You know, big ups to Nico coming back into our sport. He's a, a stellar driver from um, from way back, and he's definitely going to put the heat on this season. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. So, Nico, re really talking to the boys. Uh, tough one, right? Yeah, definitely a tough battle. I love battling with Fangare and send it pretty hard. But um, hey, not the result we're looking for. But that's road sport, eh? Mate, I know a lot of people are happy to see you back. See the smile. See the way you drive. Is it the same feeling for you coming back? Yes, definitely love being in the seat and um, I couldn't have did it without my sponsors. Keep cranking, buddy. Cheers, mate. Oh, keep cranking, Nico Reed, the people's champion. Will he be back for Topo? I'm, give him a call. Give him a call. Midweek, we'll give him a call and get him back. Cole. Well, I'm sure Alan and Putty would definitely love to see the Ford Rota uh, S15. And, of course, they're going to go to Jamboree only a couple of weeks prior to our next our round down in uh, Manawa to it. Yeah, that's true. I've just got some uh, good friend of mine, Lan. Well, oh, they yes. call him Lane. Yeah, he's been here since day one. Actually, just a bit of a photo came up from 12 years ago of uh, yep. us when I think I first unveiled my R34 Skyline. But uh, How long was your hair? It was pretty long back then. I had a beautiful mullet, dreaded. It was uh, sick. I'm not that cool now. <laughs> Arguably, you're cool. But yes, Alan uh, definitely said, uh, <clears throat> I won't repeat his uh, call on that one, but he thought it was a one more time. He's definitely a Nico Reed uh, supporter, is so, my man. So am I, but I love Fagger as well. Great guys, great team. I was happy to let the judges uh, argue the point on that one there. Well, it's time to creep into our next battle, and that will be Cody Pullenbury and Dave Steadman. Let's see what these two can do. It's RB versus 2J, 2J in the front. <laughs> Look at the entry. Oh. oh, no. Damn it. He was pushing hard, that boy. Uh, always is, always giving 110% is Look Cody Colin Murray. Look how strong Yeah. How is that still going? I don't if know, that was mate. Ra's car, it'd be... Oh, it'd be, it'd be rolling, it'd be still rolling, but yeah, he needs to go and check things, obviously. Uh, not the ideal. Big entry here from uh, Cody Colin Murray. Taps the wall then in so deep. Look, stays committed. Bang! Hits that and then just touches the wheel. So I don't think he might have, uh, he definitely stayed, was lucky on that one. And see, that's the thing, Steve. Stayed in the throttle. Look right here, committed all the way. Going wide, going wide. Stayed in and didn't get out of it. Stayed in the throttle. Boom, far. Was able to drive out of it. If he got off the throttle, would have sucked the front around so quickly. So, uh, yeah. Concrete rounds for you. Bet, Takes people real quick. A bit filthy Phil Sutherland sitting in the South Island going, there's another way you can finish that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a quick rollover. We're in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's get upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, there he is. it's a man I do miss. Uh, drain and developments, drainage and developments down south, Christchurch, Phil Sutherland. What a man. And actually, uh, Mitch Gibbs, uh, definitely missing him. He's not here. Jesse Greenslade. Right. 
What's happening with Stephen McIver? Where are you right now? You? I'm, I'm coming in front of the camera. I'm coming in front of the camera. We we are we are aware that he's called a five. So this is one car I didn't expect to be to be back. Geordie Cole and uh, mate, it's so good to see you back. Uh, yeah, last minute um, entry, <laughs> and it's um, gone all right for us so far. We've had a few issues just with steering and. Uh, a couple of oil leaks that are caught on fire, but um, yeah, massive shout out to um, Cameron Bank from Reliable Carters for sponsoring us to do this round last minute. Um, yeah. And then you have to talk to me sitting in a black a black race suit in the steaming hot weather. Yeah, I'm cooking. <laughs> she's getting she's getting pretty sweaty. <laughs> All right, Michael Michael Thorley behind us here. Yeah, this will be this is another battle, and uh, Mike had a pretty solid run at Hampton Downs last week. You must have drawn a lot of confidence from that. Uh, I did, I did. Um, so yeah, keen to go hard today. How, how were you handling the track today? Remember last time out it was wet as anything? Well like last night for qualifying we got a few sprinkles of rain so it made me a little bit nervous but today the sun is shining. Alrighty look let's just whip down to Dave Steedman because uh, we're, we're just going to walk down here because Tony can you keep up? That's good, that's good. Uh, because uh, Team DSR have had a hell of a weekend but the fact that the, uh, the man behind them Rex and Mimico are donating those diggers to the Hawks Bay makes us feel even better but uh, Mate, uh, I suggest that first run's yours, but uh, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, feeling pretty good. The Napa Mimico S14 is, you know, really, really on song. Uh, Cody just went in a bit hot there, but hopefully he gets it done in time. I, I don't know, it was a pretty hard hit, but I'd love to just, you know, finish the battle off and see how we go. Yeah, or in advance. That would be good too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, never like winning that way, but I'll take it. As you guys say, nothing's a problem. Keep coming with me, Tony, because we're going to keep going right down the back because there's one, one guy we haven't seen for a little while. Are you going to keep up with me, Tony? That's good, man. Good, man. Oh, you know you want me to run. Okay, so we're going down and see Taylor James. Haven't spoken to Taylor James for a while. Uh, didn't have probably what you would suggest the greatest round in Hampton Downs. And he's got he's running these these new Valino tyres. And I have to, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you for putting your cap on the correct manner, which I could then put up on my socials. Uh, how have you found these tyres now after a good good run? Yeah, good. Yeah, we had a run this morning with Ben Jenkins. We know his car's fast, so um, we probably had a little bit too gripped up. So we've taken some out. Um, up against Jeremy Slamet now, so his car's quick as well. So. We'll uh, send it hard, Stephen, see where we get. Got to remember, you're the defending champion here at Mount Smart. It was done in completely different conditions. That's right. Yeah, I'd rather, much rather be in the dry, obviously. Just more grip, more smoke, and try and, yeah, we'll try and make it work and see what happens. All right, let's see what the Central Drift team can get on. Let's just uh, have a quick chat to Jeremy again because he's up against one of the goodies. Uh, when Taylor James is around, you know he's a real contender. Gosh, I don't know if you can see him. He's got hooked up with his... Gosh, you under there, buddy. Uh, so, Jeremy, uh, getting a little hot in there, but you're ready to go against Taylor? Oh, yeah, I'm, like, just so very proud of what we've made with the team. I mean, we've been watching, like, Taylor James on TV and stuff, and now be able to battle against him is just, like, an achievement already for us. So we're just going to get fun there and, and, yeah, send it. All right. It looks like something out of Halo. You know that game that kids play, Halo, on the TV series? Got, got it all going on, boys, but I tell you, can I just say right now, it is cooking, absolutely cooking here. It's cooking, it's about 18 degrees. Yeah, we've got aircon up here, uh, Stephen, mate. It's real nice, real nice up the top. Not sweaty at all. Beautiful day for drifting. The uh... Well, it's good to see when it is like this because, man, do, can these guys put on a smoke show. Going from, obviously, the pro sport, uh, they can definitely lay out some good runs and put on a good bit of smoke. But when these big horsepower cars come out, man, they're, they're going through a set of tyres in two runs. Hey, we've had a, uh, a couple of different YouTube sensations here over the, uh, the last week, or sorry, over the last couple of days, the weekend here. One of them... Um, one of them is uh, Mr. Oakes. He's a great driver. He was campaigning. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Oakes. He was Oaks. campaigning. Yeah, Guy Maxwell's warehouse parts. Uh, Laurel there. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you, Cole. So yeah, I got gotcha. you. I see, I see he's uh, down in the Link ECU area, which is down uh, near the front, the corn front corner. First turn here, and I know that he's out there signing signatures today. Great to have a few of these uh, YouTubers here. Creating content. But, yeah, uh, we, we are very lucky at, in that way, eh, Steve? So coming along. Coastal Spar and Pool. It's the S14 of Jordy Cole. Oh, man, full commitment for his entry into the first turn here. 
Look at that. This is what Jordy Cole did in his uh, qualifying run. Just massive aggression. Look at the lock he's just rolling on through here. Real nice wide line. Put a bit of a gap. Just real stellar driving here from Jordy Cole. It's blowing my brain, actually. Normally he's rubber, so real good to see him driving really well. Must be that new sponsorship he's got from Cam Bank getting him through the weekend. But uh, what a drive there by Jordy Cole. Now, I did have a translation, too, from Bruce Tannock. He's uh, watching, obviously, another washed-up driver. Translation for uh, Geordie Cole's number plate is lack of offset, yet not <laughs> look cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, there's such a, a good group of guys, Steve, that have, uh, you know, been here throughout the different years, you know. We all remember Bruce Tannock. Well, Bruce Tannock, and of course, Bruce tannock has been in the tyre game since wheels were wooden. <laughs> you could say that, and I talked about it yesterday. He's got this badass RS6 wagon, and it is fast, low, and it looks cool. He doesn't look cool inside it, but it's a real nice car. As always <laughs> does Bruce, well-presented things. I hear uh, Adam Richards, another former... Um, another former D1NZ pro driver is uh, actually working on his car, fixing it back up, so... Be good to see. But here we go, the next part, Steve, of this battle. So Geordie yeah, Cole will so chase Michael Thorley. Got the director going in there, but he's turned right up and I can't hear a word he's saying. Sorry. Oh, really? I can hear him real well, so. All right, well, let's see the second half of this battle. Michael Thorley, Geordie Cole. Geordie Cole in the chase position. Yeah, Michael Thorley pushing nice and wide here. George a little bit lost in the drone there. But uh, Thorley holding a nice line here. Jordy Cole, look, trying to drive back up onto the uh, rear quarter there of Michael Thorley. Michael holding a nice line here. Real nice line here. He tucks that inside clip. Nice transition through the mid section here as now they push right out into the outside zone. Now let's see Jordy Cole get right in the pocket here as they finish the last part of the section. Wow, good bit of driving by both of these, uh, both these lads here, Steve. Great drive. I was very impressed with the chase drive of Geordie Cole. Even his lead was very good as well. It's about maintaining an arc, and he was certainly doing it. Let's have a look at the uh, the replay. Put you by Repco. We also, um, I think, also hearing Cody Pullenbury only got a small amount of time left on his five minutes. But here's the first part of uh, Geordie Cole and Michael Thorley out here. Look at that real smooth, consistent entry there. Run a bit of a wheel over the inside clip there was Geordie Cole, but. Yeah, just blowing me away a bit here. Just look how smooth he is through this outside arc. A lot of nice throttle control through here, does Geordie. Michael Thorley just sit back a little bit, transitioning a little bit wide and late there, and just Geordie really running away with the first part of that battle. And I think we're going to jump back here. Here we go, the second part here, obviously, of uh, this battle. Michael Thorley leading out. Now we've just heard my, uh, Cody Pullenbury one minute to go in his five minutes. Look at this here. We've got Geordie Cole jumping back up onto the rear quarter here of Michael Thorley. Good lead run here. Real nice line through the centre section. Exactly what the judges have been asking for the drivers to do. Now pushing out nice and wide here. Geordie Cole a little bit closer in the pocket than Michael Thorley was on the last part of that section, but not too bad there, Steve. Well, it's going to come down. Look, he's trying to get a bit of windage. Let's have a look and see what the judges have to say. Which way is it going to go? Andrew does, obviously doesn't want to show anyone his uh, score, so he's putting it down the side. Fred Wada. No result? What's yeah, there, 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 there's got to be a result, surely. Danem hasn't decided yet. What's Danem online? Well, yeah, but we've got to roll it, right? Lead for lead. Jordy Cole dropped the wheel on the inside there, so... I think now we're talking about now it's only a quarter a point uh, per judge. So let's wait and see. One, two, three. Geordie Cole gets the win. Mate, our, our judges right back at the opening part of the season said they wanted to see aggressive driving. As far as aggressive grows, I think you get an A plus on that. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just about... So many things going on. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do this weekend. Just throw it in as hard as I can. Um, chase as hard as I can. We definitely need to put a bit more grip in the car. Um, I took a bit out and I was a, thought I was a little bit, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle then to, to really get on him, but it was, um, no, it was good. The car's friggin' hot though, so hopefully we can keep going. Mate, it was a hell of a lead. Yeah, cheers. No, yeah, the, yeah, the lead, the leads, I had the lead kind of 
down pat quite well. So I was a bit nervous about the chase just with every all the car issues, but yeah, it's happening. <laughs> Go get your ice pack on it. Yeah, we need to, yeah. <laughs> all right, just quick, quick, quick chat to Michael Thorley. Mate, it's one, of, it's one of those things. If you get it right, you get it right. If you don't, you don't, right? Uh, I made some mistakes in the chase, so Jordy's a good driver. I'm glad he's back out here, but it would have been good to go through to top eight. Next time. Right. Well, I'll see you in top in a couple of weeks. Yep, Talbo, we'll get this car ready and hook up the GT radials and send it down there. Good man. Thanks. Full send here. Off we go. Another good driver, Michael Thorley, been in here a long time. But look at that, Cody Polipari. Not the fitment we normally see from Cody's car. That wheel is uh, standing up pretty straight on the rear there. But, hey, what a team. I've got it fixed. I know they probably had 30 people working on that car to make sure he got back on track. Obviously, we know there's a big advantage uh, not going his way. So we will see how he goes right now. So the 500 valve was for... Yeah, memory contact, hit the wall pretty hard. That was against Dave Stedman, wasn't it? So how long have you got to get out and be on the grid? Oh, look, Dave wasn't even ready. So that means that <laughs> he could almost... No, nah, he can't, because then obviously yeah, there was no communication and Dave didn't know, he was standing around. Look at that, there's Adam, like, oh, you need your belts done? And look, there goes he Troy might Jenkins, going, always helping. I know, and look at that, how awesome is that, Troy, trying to help get this thing uh, sorted up, sorted for them, but yeah, not ideal. <laughs> Dave must have been over on the, uh, sitting in the trees, because obviously it's like 130 degrees in those cars, so he'll be, uh, <laughs> want to keep Gilbert, here he goes, Dave Stedman, coming to the line now. Well, he's going to go have to sh uh, scrub his tyres too, so, you yeah, don't know what happened oh, there. No. Maybe they were going to let uh, Cody Pullenbury do a mechanical. And that's oh, where Dave course. thought... Um, Maybe they could demand that so they don't get in trouble. Beautiful S14, of course, very similar to the S14 that we just saw of uh, Jordy Coles, apart from a different front clip. That S14 of Jordy Coles, of course, is a former car by Jaron Olive Kroner. Olive Kroner desperately hoping to be back out here in his new car next round. If he can get round four. That's it, Steve. But here we go, the second part of this battle. Dave Stedman, big entry there, look at the car squatting down, look at that, Cody pulling boat right there. Did I crash? No, I didn't. I'm going to sit on the door of Dave Stedman and try and force a mistake. Well, nice. Right. So much commitment. He is there. Wow, big, big wheel off there for uh, Dave Stedman, pushing quite wide, but look at the pressure from Cody pulling Murray. Nearly locked himself out there by transitioning real tight up onto Dave Stedman, but... Look at this, pushing hard is Cody Pullenbury trying to force the mistake of Dave Stedman, but hands uh round of applause to both oh, these how drivers right good now is here. BB. Yeah, that was a lot of aggression right there. Uh, it's just a lot of water there, obviously. Very hot conditions out there. Uh, all the drivers will have their water squirters uh, working very hard on their radiators, but... Here comes a replay here, Steve. Look at this transition here. Look at Cody right on the door, right there. Cody Dave Fuller Burry, absolutely full commitment. He knew that he had nothing to lose now. He's already in a deficit. I'm going to get right on that door. I'm going to try and push a mistake. What do they call that? One wheel off, I think that probably was for Dave Stedman right there. I think that hurt Adam Davies uh, in qualifying also, running quite wide there. Judges really penalised him hard, but... Dave holding it back together. Cody Pullenbury right on the door, putting all the pressure on to finish that section. But uh, whew, look at these people, these Pullenbury boys. They are the best, like they are such good drivers. No names on the side of their car, still looking for a naming rights sponsor. So uh, if you want to see your name for the next round, get in touch with the team. Call me and I'll let you get in touch. Oh How yeah, just one wheel. One. So he didn't quite get that inside wheel over the, uh, over the white line. It was just there on the inside, so. Only a bit of a points deduction, which we already know is 10-0 up, so shouldn't be a zero out run on that one for Dave Stedman. If we really slow it down, definitely uh, should be only the um, one wheel there, but very, very lucky there for uh, <coughs> Cody to come out and still be able to battle after, yeah, contacting the wall quite heavily. Let's see who's going to take it. Oh, we've got judges' results. One, two, three. Dave Stedman with the win.
Dave, it feels like you guys need a bit of luck today, but that was a hell of a lead when you had him right up your tailpipe. Oh, it was pretty messy, to be honest. I was off most of the clips, suffering with a bloody misfire just out of the blue. So, yeah, I mean, he was right there. Hats off to him. It's a shame he went in the wall. It could have been a much better battle, but hey, I'll take the win. We'll try and get this misfire sorted and get back out there for the top eight. Mate, that was a hell of a battle. Keep smiling. Thanks, mate. All right, let's 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 go and talk to Cody Paul and Burrow. We actually don't really know what actually went on in the five, so we'll quickly understand. What was the five for, buddy? What did you need to do? Oh, I just whacked the wall pretty hard, eh, in the front and the rear, so, but yeah, it's still stayed it's pretty straight, so why not send it, put on a chase, put on a show? Mate, uh, can I just say, in the in the words of my director, that was an animal chase, that was so good to watch. Yeah, I had to do something, eh, just come in about fucking, well, come in about hot on my um, lead, yeah, and put it in the wall, so I knew I had to go hard. Which, yeah. Well, well, mo yeah. most important now, go watch your brother Case out, see if he can make it two in a row in pro sport, right? Yeah, of course, he's going to take it out. Clean All sweep, right. clean sweep. Clean sweep, there you go. And just remember, it's uh, PG-13. How many times have I told you, mate? PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surroundings. He can trust you. He's willing to just, you know, relax with his wording. Oh, the adrenaline's pumping after that, especially after that chase. He'll be obviously very, very ecstatic after that uh, chase battle. Obviously, knew in his lead, pushed too hard, and uh, really just gave it away. So, of course, yeah. civil construction, the name on the side of Pull and Burry's car this weekend. I know Cody would want me to say a big thank you to Core Civil Construction. Uh, doing a great job. Pro wear on the side of this man and Valino on the side of those rims. What is the go? Like, what are the amount of stick these Valinos give? Yeah, it's a type of tyre that they've designed to strictly be drifting. It was something that the Achilles uh, used to have, the Achilles 1 2 3, yeah, that was called, that. and that was just a tyre that just dominated. It okay, came he's out. got an issue here, though. Oh yeah, bit of uh, bit of oil on the track. Pretty hectic. Oh yeah. Ooh. Just a bit of a chat. The judge is coming down just to say you commentators are doing a terrible job. The judges just said that they judging us and we do. The judges are different the judges. But we judge the judges. Shame that they, they, we, we could have tried to bring them on screen. Oh, that's good. That these guys come, come jump on and tell us what. Oh, it's really good. We've just had Andrew Redwood and uh, Dana Timberman come up just to give us a bit of insight why they played so many replays uh, when Dave Steadman obviously battled as he came into that outside zone. Yes, they're looking at the rear wheels, but they're also looking at the front wheels. And to be fair, his right front was also over that. Uh, that white line so he had a right front right rear and then they were looking was the rear left also over three wheels that's a zero so that then could have been a one more time so very very lucky for dave he knows he definitely won't be pushing that hard in that zone uh again to uh, obviously cause you know that mistake there's three judges notice joel counter he's like the outer statesman of judges here in the d1nz right now he just said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to stay in my seat. I know what I might do. You go and tell those uh, commentators. First time I've seen in 10 years of commentary, a couple of judges coming to see us. Yeah, well, we uh, sort of paid them out quite heavily the other day, so they <laughs> needed to come and give us a bit of info. But here we go. Taylor James uh, leading out here. Massive entry by Taylor. Jeremy Slamet sitting right up in the pocket, though. Steve, this is really good to see. Wow, what a transition. Jeremy Slamet. Now, of course, this kid, he drifts in car parks in New Val, Caledonia, New Caledonia. He knows this sort of surface probably better than our drivers do. Look at this. Look at the commitment by this New Caledonian driver right up on the door here. Taylor James. Wow, this is good to see, Steve. Woo. What a drive. I mean, the guy's young. He won the MSC Challenge. Was it last year or the year before? He's actually got a drive or the ability to drive in NZ, uh, sorry, in the D1JP as well. Maybe going... Um, a couple the, of years the, ago, got D1 JP, uh, D1 in Japan, the uh, oh, the J2, J, yeah, I think so. Yeah, D1, J, yeah. Look, here we go. So look at this lead here by Taylor James. Just massive smoke, a lot of angle, keeping a lot of smooth um, rock, a lot of smooth angle through this section. There was a bit of a bobble there by Jeremy as he transitioned. I think there, Steve got a bit caught out in the smoke. But gathered it back up and look at this back right on the door here of Taylor James, really putting the pressure on. 
I know right now Darren's going to say, you're going to have to probably do an eight there, bud. Pull it together, right up on his door. I hear the numbers that you guys talk. It means nothing to me, but let's see what happens in the second half of the battle. We've got Taylor James versus Jeremy Slammett. The youngster from New Caledonia comes over to drift with the D1NZ. His turn to lead. Yeah, here we go, Jeremy Slammett. Look at that entry, real aggressive entry there. Taylor, real shallow up in the inside there, trying to gain some proximity on Jeremy, holding a real nice smooth line here as they transition. Jeremy sitting really nicely on that outside zone as Taylor really tries to close the door into this last, <coughs> I mean, into this inside clip here as they transition through the centre section, Steve. Look at that, Jeremy pulling away off Taylor James with these Velinos. Where is he pulled? Oh, no! Big Was mistake! Was he over the line? Oh, Jeremy will be gutted about that. Did the car shut down or Did something? Did it shut down, but was he over the finish line? Well, lucky we've got the Repco replay. <laughs> Let's have a look and see as the NZKW Supra. GT86 Supra fires through. Nice job by Jeremy. And as you talked about, slow, uh, shallow angle for the RB34 powered S14. Yeah, to be fair, I thought Taylor would have been right up all over him, but he was really having a shortcut the track to try and keep up with Jeremy through the centre section. Look through here. They transition. Now, hopefully we can hold this angle here. Oh, he rubbed the wall. No. That's what no. happened. What do you think? So he touched the wall, pulled a little bit of angle out. So, ooh, interesting. I think Taylor didn't make too many mistakes on his lead run, to be yep. fair. It was it was a pretty clean run there. And yes, one, two, three, Taylor James gets the win. Hell of a lead, hell of a chase, but he pushed you all the way. Uh, we, we know he's on good tyres, so we did drop the pressures a little bit there. Went to high boost, much to Brian's disgust, but yeah, um, car felt really good. Um, go and check a few little things. It's a bit hot, so we'll go and cool it off. But no, wrap to get that, some, some much needed points for sure. All right, go cool down. Cheers, mate. Let's just quickly talk to uh, Jeremy Slammett. A little bit of uh, damage on the right rear, but as you hit the wall on the way back. Yeah, I just sent it a little bit too much, I think. And well, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I was maybe putting a little bit too much. Nothing wrong with putting too much and being aggressive, but you look like you're going to go a long way somewhere along the way in this Val of Lean D1NZ series, buddy. Oh, thank you very much for it. I really appreciate it. And we're going to work hard with the team to get better for next round. All right, there you go, Jeremy Slippin. What a lovely bloke, eh? Hey? Don't you love these drivers in D1NZ? Okay. I'm getting screamed out of my ear. It's such a lovely day out here in uh, Val of Lean D1NZ. We're going to take a wee break because we're getting close to that top four. Oh, yeah. Well, it's about Lee D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It is round number two here at Mount Smart Stadium in Auckland. Beautiful day to go drifting. The crowd here, it's a smaller area for, uh, for viewers. But what a view they get as we see Aotearoa's best battling out side by side. Mount Smart Stadium putting it on. Of course, the home of the Warriors. The one Warriors, but we can only be one D1 NZ, and it's right here, right now, this weekend. Certainly, certainly seen a number of great battles today, and it's starting to heat up. It's getting better and better, and we are getting down to towards that top four time. We're going to stop for a moment it's, and have our pro sport drivers back out on track to battle out their final, their battle for third and fourth as well. Of course, uh, We'll see those drivers coming through in a only a moment's time. Looking at the battle sheets. We've uh, seen some great battles today. As our production, as our crew are on the blowers, getting rid of the oil downs that we've had. Cole, what's happening, buddy? You enjoying your day? I am indeed, Steve. You, I always enjoy my day, especially at these concrete rounds. Mount Smart. I get excited at Bay Park. Hopefully I can get out again and have a bit of a drive at Bay Park. Last time I actually crashed into the wall, I thought I was uh, better than I actually am. But uh, that's right, live and learn. Oh, Fixed you it. are though, you are. I'd really love it to be able to come back and do one round 
And as I said, like, I want to fix this NASCAR motor because it's such an awesome car. I mean, motor, and it sounds wicked. But I don't know what to put it in. It needs to be in something really cool because I'm not cool, so I need it to be in something cool. So then that helps me out. But I remember when I brought out that NASCAR motor G35, man, it was cool here. I could actually show you a little clip on my phone, Steve. Oh, and, uh, look forward to that. Well, it's probably way back. We're talking like five, six, seven, eight years. Hopefully, a few friends of mine here, uh, Jeffrey and Scoot, uh, they've come all the way up from uh, Taranga to support Calvin, who's already driven back home. Calvin has. Yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> Did he? He's, well, okay. he's already on his way uh, home. Calvin Clark, he, he had a battle earlier on today. He got gapped off the line. Well, he actually didn't, Steve, what in happened? his, in his uh, defence. So, obviously something that you, you panic about, but came up to the line in that, not used to a dog box, that S14 is driving had a dog box. So, came up to the line. So here we go, not too far away from a top four battle, the first of our top four battles. And this is Troy Jenkins and his GT86 from the Carter's Tire Service put going. He comes up against the man that is having so much fun, and that will be Kurt Blackie. Oh, there it is. And the VF Commodore that was has been lent to him by Fanger Down this weekend. But as he said before, look at the plates. He hasn't forgotten his GT86 that he calls Wolfie. The smoke show rolls on the top four in the Valvoline D1NZ. Well, it is the Valvoline D1NZ, all right. We've certainly got a few drivers getting ready to go up and battle. And, of course, one of them is Kurt Blackie going up against Troy Jenkins. It is the... Castrol, Century Batteries, Gas Tech, Colab Digital, VF, Holden Commodore going up against the Carter Tires, Pugakawi, 2JZ powered, GT86, Troy G Jenkins on the right hand side of our shot as they get ready to release them. And it will be Jenkins who leads the way first time. Yeah, here we go. Nice tame entry there by Troy. Kurt's just sitting, sitting back a little bit as well in that big Commodore. <coughs> Troy doing a nice nice line through that midsection. Probably didn't push wide, very wide through the uh, outside zone there, tucking up really tight here. Kurt doing too, not too bad of a job through the centre section, trying to hold that car up as Bang now gets on the throttle, gets right up on the door of that car that's tired. It's 86 of Troy Jenkins. Wow, good way to finish the uh, last part of that lap there. It was pretty tame from both drivers, I have to say. Uh, nothing too uh, outstanding from them. So nothing too outstanding. Hopefully nothing too much in the way of mistakes either. The Repco replay as we see these drivers hit the first turn. Yeah, well, look at that. Nice entry there by, by Troy. Nice and wide through the centre section. Tucked onto that inside clip, doing a good job there. Probably could have pushed a little bit wider into that outside zone. Got there a little bit late. Kurt doing a good job. Look at that car just lunging, lunging forward. Not dropping a wheel, does Troy. Doing a good job through the centre section. Nice shallow switch as then, dang, that Wolfie or that Commodore starts to pounce into the last part of that section. But I have to say, real smooth and um, well-driven first uh, part of that battle there by Troy Jenkins. We'll see what's going to happen in the second half of this battle to see who's going to go through into the top four. It's the uh, Kurt Blackie, Troy Jenkins. It's Kurt Blackie's time. Fang and Anne's Commodore. Century Batteries, Castro, New Zealand on the side. Yeah, look at that. Nice, clean entry there by Kurt Blackie. Really throwing that big girl around here. Enjoying it. A lot of commitment, a lot of throttle there. Right out into that outside zone. Doing a good job here. Just probably pushed a little bit wide, the same as he did in his last battle. Troy just sitting back there. Waiting to pounce onto this last uh, outside zone here into the pocket. But look at that of Kurt Blackie. Right out on the wall there in that Commodore. That's a good lead run there by Kurt Blackie. And, and a good chase there too by Troy Jenkins. Just probably didn't quite have that proximity uh, that Kurt may have had. But, well, yeah, I can't see really too many mistakes there, Steve, from both these boys. Well, it always comes down to mistakes. You can't see them. Is that going to mean that we're going to look at going through an OMT or one more time as we see these two drivers doing a great job? Yeah, I probably think the only thing, so, so Kurt got this from Troy's lead if we look back. Troy got this in a clip, which Kurt didn't. So 
pass for parcel, no wheels dropped to be fair through that centre section. They were allowed one wheel off in the chase position, is yeah, that, that area there? Kurt's probably a little bit wider through that outside zone as they come through the centre section. So, uh, yeah, interesting to see. Judges have got a result. One, two, three. Kurt Blackie gets the win. Wow, we give a pat on the back to Stephen from me. Woo -hoo -hoo. There's a lot of excitement in the commentary book. <laughs> How good. Oh, my God. This is a dream result. Um, top four. Hats off to Troy. He's a phenomenal driver. I knew I could commit to him. Um, and, yeah, this, this old girl is, oh, my God. It's work. It's a workhorse. It's working so well. And, um, I just can't thank my sponsors enough that have backed me all this year, um, Gas Tech and Colab Digital and obviously Fanger for giving me the keys. Can you imagine if you face them in the final? Oh, that would be a dream result for me and Fanger if we go 1-2, uh, meet in the final, put it all on the line and I know he's not going to give it easy to me, so uh, yeah, you know, we'll push him around. Well done, mate. Let's just quickly have a quick chat to Troy because there are many, and I know one of the judges couldn't call it. One of the judges, one of the judges had an OMT, and I think a lot of us thought that way. But there you go, bud. Yeah, actually, pretty damn disappointed with that. I thought it was an OMT, or um, yeah, I'm actually really pissed off with that one. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, it's a judge sport, so uh, Carter's tyre service TD86 was going super well today, and it's, um, yeah, well done, Kurt, in a borrowed car, you know, well done. But. Um, I honestly thought that was a bloody good chase and a really good lead, so uh, that is what it is. Yeah, but you know what? Team Jenkins do such a good thing in, in this uh, this sport. Uh, you got to take that one on the chin, keep on rolling, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, you know. Um, I can only be angry at myself. I'll watch the replay and have a look at it, but um, yeah, I thought that was really good, so uh, we'll right, relive to live live another day. All right, buddy. Well, you're done. Well, thanks, Troy. It is a tough one, Steve. It is a judge sport, but, uh, you know, one of those things, you got to look at the replays now, go back, see what it was in my eyes, possibly the only thing, like I did say, Troy probably didn't get to that out of zone early enough, like um, they had done for the judge line, Kurt did. Troy did get to that in a clip where Kurt didn't. And then I think, really, and this is only from what we're all seeing as a viewer, um, Kurt was probably a bit wider and closer to the outside yes. zones around the uh, uh, around the rear. Yeah, well that sounds about right. Zones. What have we got here in the way of a battle? Well, I can see Jason Ferrin turning up in the R31 wagon. Who's he going up against? I think he's going up against another Australian. Is this our first Australia versus Australia battle in the D1? Have, have you got a battle tree? Um, I've got it written down here. Isn't it? I've got a battle tree. Hold on a sec. I'll get it. And it is Mitch Lana versus Jason Ferrin. Battle of Australia. Oh, this is going to be good. I don't think these two have uh, ever battled one another, I don't I think, don't Steve. I don't think D1NZ's ever had an Australian versus an Australian battle. You're probably right, actually. This is this is going to be one to watch here. Jason Farron versus uh, Mitch Lana, WA versus Melbourne. Here we go, Jason leading out. Big entry here on the Barrow Wagon. Wow, running real wide. Nice and smooth through that centre section. Mitch Lana having a few mistakes in behind there. Trying to now play catch up on that big wagon. Just pull and gap. We talked about this last round, eh? Man, that car is quick. As he finally bolted on the, was the R1s, R3s? Yeah, something like that. But here he goes, look, pitching it up into this outside zone. Mitch Lana catching back up, trying to jump back into the pocket there. Good bit of driving by both of these oh, lads. That noise if you're here live, it's incredible. It is, eh? It's an aggressive set of anti-lag. And really good for the car. Oh. Hot chips, Steve. Hot chips. All I really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little base. All right, well, let's uh, see what happens as we go around for our second run, the second half of this battle. Because of uh, technical issues, it doesn't look like we've got a replay of that run there, but that's why our judges are judges, and that's why they've got beautiful eyes. Well, it's the second half. It's Australia versus Australia. Maybe it's a... There's no Anzac in there. It's just A... Side by side, at the start line we go again, and it will be 
Michelana's turn. Looks like this is like going for a slight change of technology, uh, I've heard, in the judging area. So we'll get ready to let them go. Just wait to hear race control say full send. Send it. So, Stephen. No, you're fine. I'm chip. You are totally fine. Mm, the tasty chips too. Oh, and here we go. They're up again. Mitch leading it out. Run it for us, Steve. Well, off we go side by side. It's the Battle of Australia right now. The D1NZ. Mitch on a massive issue for that car. What is oh broken goal? Oh, my God. What is How it? is he still driving that? There's a broken arm on that car, and I do not know how he is driving. How oh. is that wheel not falling off? Darren Kelly, you're in the dog box, I tell you that much, mate. I told you you shouldn't have tutted with the car. Holy moly. How is Mitch Lana still driving this thing with the wheel doing that? That is phenomenal. <laughs> Look at that, Jason Farrell still right on the rear corner. Oh, Darren Kelly is going to get a good old whistling on this one, I tell you that much. Have they got parts? But there he is right there, hands on his head. Oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> like, this is a th I'd guess this is a $300,000 drift car, and Darren's had a tutu with it. Oh, well, I guess he hasn't going to get too much work after this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't be blaming Darren for everything. All right, let's have a look and see what oh, no. broken arm is saying. Yeah, I'd say, the car. I'd say there's Not definitely the been a broken arm. Oh, look, <laughs> that side skirt would be 10 grand by itself. <laughs> this is Formula One money right here. Oh, wow. What a drive by Mitch Lana, though, just stayed in it. Imagine how far on, how the car would have Give him the win. Give him the win. Look at this. He's like, mate, I think the wheel's falling. <laughs> Look at his... <laughs> Holy. So we don't have a replay here, what? Steve, which is oh, not ideal. What? Not oh. ideal, but, man. Look, there's Darren right there going, oh, no. <laughs> What just, happened? Just, nah, just get be Tony me. to point at Mitch <laughs> talk us through what happened. Holy. Well, we've got a result here, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. We've got it one more time by the looks. Wow, Darren Kelly, get your spanners out, mate, because you've got a car to fix. Uh, this is Nazi gun again. <laughs> yeah, so we came all the way from Australia, both of us, so <laughs> we figured we may as well just go again, just keep going. Like, you know, it's hard to beat an Aussie. You, you can't just go straight through when you're against another Aussie, so... <laughs> Get out of here. Go set yourself up. Let's quickly talk to Mitch Lana over here. See what's happening. Uh, so just quickly, uh, what's gone on? Did you hit the wall? Yeah, I rubbed the wall on the very first run. Um, I chased Jason in. We went a little bit deep and I was waiting for him to go. And I, I don't know if he like, went too deep himself, but it sucked me into the wall. Hit it, felt it hit, and I could feel it did something. And then when I went around for the lead, it... Um, well, come over, yeah, come and show us what's going on because I'm surprised that wheel stayed on. Mate. We're, we're going, what the hell are you, so can you show us where you, what's going on? So yeah, when I when I went for my lead, I took off from the line and I felt the car sort of start hopping. I was like, we're this far now, we might as well commit. And I could feel the whole time, I could smell it rubbing on everything, but the wheel was just bouncing. I'm surprised it stayed together and we got to the end. Obviously, we got another chance now, so. So you're going to call a five? We're going to have to call a five or a ten if it's his fault, I'm not sure, but we'll work it out and we'll get back out there. <laughs> you're crazy, man, you are crazy. <laughs> That's what Valvoline D1NZ is all about. I think that's probably one of the craziest drives that we have seen. Unbelievable. But he uh, survives for a one more time, lads. Actually, we just actually had uh, Andrew Redwood come in. So they called it a one more time. Yes, because Mitch is actually right. Uh, Jason's entry was a lot different to what he'd been doing the whole time. So it actually caused um, <coughs> Mitch to go into the wall. I don't know if they're calling it uh, actually... Um, Jason's fault, so Mitch would then get 10 minutes, so he still probably will have to call a five minutes, but that's how they classed it as a one more time. It was uh, Jason's, they classed as deemed Jason's fault for doing a different entry, really uh, putting Mitch off, putting him obviously then to run into the wall, so good to get that clarity because obviously we I didn't see him hit the wall. Uh, I guess that Barrett Barrow wagon was pumping out some smoke. We, we didn't quite uh, see it, but what a drive from Mitch Lana. Wow. What a drive. Wow. All right. More Valvoline D1NZ action after the break.
Well, it's a bubble in D1 International Drifting Championship round number two, Mount Smart Stadium, and it's getting to the pointy end of the round. So we see some great battles up there. Kurt Blackie, he's gone into this. Uh, is that his first top four in pro? I think it is. Jason Ferrin versus Mitch Lana. That is a battle against Australia versus Australia. And I tell you what, Australia is currently winning that and losing. Finger Dan, he's going to be going up against Dave Steadman. Jordy Cole versus Tay J. Taylor James. It's going to be a beautiful day of drifting. It's getting to the tight side. Oh, what a mix up, Steve. What an absolute mix up, I tell you that much. Good to see Kurt Blackie stepping up. Obviously, this next battle, what a, I can't believe he stayed in it. And that wheel was bucking around like no other. Next one up, it's Banger Dan. Dave Steadman. It's going to be an interesting one. Then Jordy Cole, hey, Taylor James. Don't forget that, of course, Banger Dan went up against uh, Adam Davies. And remember, there's a bit of a mark on the car. I reckon Dave's going to give it back to Fanger. <laughs> you could be right. We actually missed that. Remember, I think you said that in the last round. And I was like, hmm, I have to say, I didn't really see that. And, you know, I don't really believe you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so after with the event had hap uh, finished, yeah, they, they showed me the damage. And it's, yeah, it was a hefty hit there. Hefty hit. All right, well, uh, we're almost back with Stephen McIver. I can't wait. Valvoline D1NZ with our first round winner, Fanger Down in the Century Battery's RTR Mustang and looking strong, qualified second this time round. But I've got to say, you are such a good bugger. Uh, Kurt Blackie is having so much fun in your old VF. Yeah, no, it's good. You know, like, um, I've really felt sorry for Kurt. He's had a lot of um, bad mechanical stuff that's, um, that's out of his control, you know. Um, he's trying to do the right thing and... I just thought, nah, it's sitting there, it's, um, it's a good car, it, it needs to be out there, it needs to be used. Uh, it's currently for sale, if anyone <laughs> wants it. Um, but yeah, nah, it's super cool. I think it's actually, um, it's a guy, the guy's actually set up in the commentary yesterday, it's almost like, um, it's part of the furniture in D1NZ, that thing, you know? So um, Like you? Yeah, like me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's so. and you're a lovely lounge chair at that, <laughs> and a very quick one. Go scrub, buddy. Come on. Right, let's do it. Go scrub, all right. Nothing like scrubbing an RTR Mustang with a supercharged Coyote V8 in it, cash roll, and Century Batteries. Two names that have been on the side of Fanger Dan as long as we can remember. Yeah, you did right there, Steve. Long, long time they have been there, and then he just stepped the game up. Took it to the next level, got RTR on, Ford, and uh, yeah, has just keep, uh, kept it there since he's had it, and uh, no doubt they will be very, very happy. I know uh, Vaughan Gidden over in America will no doubt be keeping an eye on things to see how Fang is going. And the RTR family, it's a massive, massive uh, beast over in the States now. There's nothing like having two Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5Ds, and uh, there's nothing like having to go up against the Mimico Ryko 24-7, Napa Auto Parts, RB30 powered Nissan S14, totaling as Dave Stedman behind the wheel, and I know that that team there does like to battle Fanger Dan. Oh, they definitely do. There's always a good, a bit of, uh, good bit of controversy through it, <coughs> but... Let's hope now on this one. Steve, there's some nice clean battles there. Obviously, Dave not wanting to run a wheel wide in that outside uh, outside clip. Just a nice 
clean chase run here for Dave Steadman is all we need. Obviously, Fanger Dan, you know, he's going to be laying down a pretty sick lead run. So let's see how Dave Steadman does in the chase. Well, off we go. It's down to Watchmaster Willie, who sends him full speed down the front straight here at Mount Smart Stadium and Fanger straight into action. Yeah, look at that. Real nice wide line there by Fanger Dan. Dave now tucking into the pocket, sitting back a little bit, a little bit further. Look at that transition there from Fanger Dan, just on the throttle so early, sitting nice and wide. Dave doing a pretty good job there. Could be a little bit closer in my eyes as they transition through that centre section. Nice oh, transition there from Dave. Now just needs to sit on the throttle, get right up on the door there of Fanger Dan. What a good oh, lead there. That was amazing. <coughs> just so smooth in that car. Really, really. Um, oh. Just incredible to watch. So we have a look at the Repco replay as Fangadan kicks it into life on the loud pedal, keeps a nice safe line, and then gives a beautiful cha uh, chaseable lead for Dave Steadman. Yeah, he does, Steve. Look at that transition right there. Bam! Rotates that car to angle so quickly. One who has been able to hold it out nice and wide there, tucked to the inside there. Less angle through this transition. Dave did really well. Then bang, needed to get on throttle there. I think there was a bit of hesitation. And obviously Fanger pulled away there. It's one of those hard things, knowing is he going to uh, get into the loud pedal. But we'll switch it up there, Steve. And on to the next one. Well, let's see what Dave Steadman can respond with when he leads out the three times and current New Zealand Drift King. Fanger and Woolhouse, we are off again. Dave Steadman, it's the RB versus the Coyote V8. Yeah, big entry there from Dave. Wow, right up, oh, right out on the wall. Touches the wall, puts himself off there, regains it again. Fanger just sit back, just enough, drops another wheel. Does Dave in that outside zone? Not what the judges want to see. A little bit messy here again from Dave Steadman <clears throat> in the lead run. Fanger just sitting back here, getting comfy, giving him enough room to, uh, no doubt, run less mistakes through that but yeah Dave Steadman putting it in the wall pretty hard on the uh, second outside clip there so yeah as you can see bit of bit of wear there for Dave and then once again here on the Repco Repo let's see this a lot of speed here from Dave on throttle did well to stay in it bang banger did real well to just not have any contact there now Dave gathered back up missed that in the clip Steve that, did this all start again, from just pushed the, wide. Did this all start from bringing the fraction too long on the handbrake on entry? Could have been a little bit more throttle, got a little bit more drive in the tyres. Uh, they, they were a lot hotter, so when he led, got a little bit more drive, a little bit more speed. But And both of these drivers are both running on uh, tri-ace tyres. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a look and see who is going to take it. Dan and Templeman, Joel Counter and Andrew Redwood, they both say Fanger Dan will go through. Well, champ, you keep on rolling. How did that feel? Oh, um, you don't know what's going on in this car, eh? We're just fighting the steering, eh? And I'm just shaking like hell, trying to keep it all together. But it's, it's still working, but I'm manhandling this machine, eh? But, um, yeah, we're just going to... Um, you know, Dave, he's, he's, he's been in the sport for a long, long time and um, I thought he's going to get me this round. <laughs> but um, he just, yeah, the entry is super slippery a little bit now. Um, I don't know if it's just getting too hot. And, um, you know, he just went a foot wide and yep. clipped that wall and that was all she wrote. So he'll come back for me. He, 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 will, he will a bit. Uh, oh, you must be gutted. Oh, I thought I was going to get him too. But, yeah, like he said, just... A little bit too hot, mate. About a foot too deep, and that's pretty much all she wrote. Yeah, I was pretty pretty happy with how the car was running, but it just threw it all away. Pretty pretty gutted. All right, mate. Well, keep smiling because there's always another weekend to come back and do your thing. You know it. All right, Cole Armstrong. Slippery with the heat is a comment that uh, mm. was just made. What does that mean? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> I have no idea. Nah, all I'm thinking is. What can happen is that the tyres can get that hot that they actually end up just sort of rolling off the actual tyre itself. They don't have that real bite that you want out of the tyre. They're sort of overcooked. And then when the tyre seal is hot like they are as well, the contact with one another, you don't get that real stick. Um, it sort of, yeah, just floats a lot more. So that could be what's happening. 
who knows? But to be fair, Dave did a nice smooth entrance uh, entry. That was what he was doing all weekend. He just pushed a touch deeper, you know. He might have stayed on the throttle for a microsecond longer and uh, it doesn't take much to, you know, send it in the wall. So, yeah, pretty gutted, no doubt, uh, as Dave Stedman and the uh, Mimico team. But still got to be pretty happy. That was him through to the uh, top eight. So still pretty good points on that one. Yeah, great drive by uh, both of those guys there. I've just been listening into um, what I can hear from uh, in the direction well, from our directors, and it, it appears that uh, Jason slowed down on entry. Jason Ferrin in the Keep It Reap R31 Skyline. Now, what that's meant is that it's given Mitch Lana um, ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. Ten minutes. So it was classed as the damage to Mitch's car was caused by the other driver, Jason. So. He actually didn't need to call his five minutes. He has 10 minutes allocated to him to check over the car and fix it. And then if that 10 minutes isn't enough, he can then call his uh, five minutes. So, yeah, good bit of feedback for us on that one. Um, so we obviously knew, and obviously everyone at home understands what's going on. But obviously, off to our next battle, Geordie Cole. He is up against... Jordy Cole, he is up Taylor James. So this will be a, this will be a goodie. Jordy's been driving so well. I love his side. It's just Jordy Cole. Yeah, real aggressive. Aggressive and just kind of doesn't care. Yeah, but one thing he has been saying, and it's a hard thing when you are at these short rounds. Obviously, that's a twin turboed uh, one UZ. One UZ as well. Yeah. yeah. So it gets really hot. Really hot, really quickly, obviously. Two turbos, pushing a lot of boost through that V8 motor. But here's Look the man to watch. Taylor James, Central Drifts Taylor James. New sponsor on the side from this season, ProWear, Azar and his team, and of course, Valino. See their name on the guards, big sticky rubber. Yeah, well, they've obviously part taken a bit of grip out of that car because, to be fair, I've seen it uh, hook up really, really well. So, do you do it with tyre pressure? Yeah, yeah, tyre pressure. And obviously, a lot of wheel setup, uh, suspension setup now too uh, for it. All right, sorry, Zach from Hodge, you've got to carry on. He runs away. Oh, is that is that Cam Bank down there? Jeez, I see you. I see you, Mrs. and Baby, up here, mate, with us. What's he doing down there? Ain't eh? just cruising around. Is that Carl? Oh, might have been. Oh, could have been actually, yeah. Carl Thompson. Look at the aggression there from Jordy Cole. Oh, oh, oh. Hold your horses. He was aggressive, but not aggressive enough. Got out the throttle. The thing gripped up on him. Taylor James doing well there to sort of hold it back, but now a bit of a given, really, for him. Jordy Cole now obviously trying to force the uh, mistake here from Taylor James, which is going to be a pretty hard one. Pretty hard one to do. As Taylor, yeah, sits up and behind there, but see that entry there, which I'll we'll certainly be watching it again. What happened there? I mean, this guy is just like charges down the straight. He's been charging all weekend, third qualifier, and uh, now a little bit of an issue as we go up and we'll get, well, hopefully, we'll see the uh, replay. Here we go. Look at the entry, bam. Just needed to get on throttle. Chickened out, that's all he did. <laughs> he chickened out. He thought, whoa, I'm coming in here hot. Nah, you had it on the money, boy. Needed to stay in the throttle. You, The old man's gonna give you a clip around the ears for that. Oh, good to see though, Geordie Cole really having some fun out there. <clears throat> in the coastal pools, uh, S14, 1UZ twin turbo. Good old Toyota V8, and they're producing a lot of horsepower. Well, it'll be the second half time. Look at them. There they are. Thumbs up. Chrome gets you home. Taylor James. His turn to lead. High qualifier will always lead out the first part of the run. Taylor James wasn't this time, but off we go. Yeah, look at the car sit down, but look at Jordy Cole. I'm on the door here, Taylor James. I'm here to party. Taylor doing a good lead run here, nice and wide. 
Opening the door for Geordie Cole to suck right up on the inside here. He might have caught himself out a little bit here as they transition now onto the outside zone here. Taylor way up on the inside here as he now finally pushes out to that outside zone. Oh, he... Geordie Cole's going to be gutted. That was one hey. of the chases of the weekend. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a pretty good chase. And obviously, yeah, he'll be gutted. He threw that away. Just check out the Repco replay here. Look, nice entry here by Taylor James. Look at it. Just sitting down. Just nice squat. and wide. Nice and wide there. Opening the door for Geordie Cole. A little bit of uh, a few bobbles in behind there. But look at that. Transitioning nicely. Pushing nice and wide as... Taylor James, Geordie Cole running to sit right in that little inside pocket. Now as they transition into this outside zone. Wanting to be a bit wider onto the uh, outside section there was Taylor, but I think obviously the mistake uh, from Geordie Cole was definitely uh, more than what Taylor did. Here we go, who's it gonna be? Taylor James gets the win. Let's go down and hear from Taylor. Mate, it looks like it's a, it's a, a cooker in there, but he pushed you in that chase. Yeah, I, I assumed he was going to. Um, we, he did talk about he had some steering bind earlier on, and it looked like that's what happened on the entry, but I just knew if I just kept a clean lead and um, done the best I could, um, yeah, made it work, so we're at top four. Bang it in, next. Woo! We'll send it. <laughs> All right. Let's go and talk to Geordie Cole, because we've got a lot, of, a lot of water going to cool this thing down. Got to ask you, what happened on the initiation, mate? Oh, just staring by, and we've been fighting it all weekend. And, um, I don't know, I just threw it in the same as I've been doing, and because we put a lot more grip into the car, it just wants to, like, three-wheel, so it was just too strong. Just, I don't know, I should have just kept my foot up, but, but I hesitated, and it um, just I just couldn't muscle it <laughs> off lock. But um, I stuck it to him in the chase, trying to, trying to make him spin out, but <laughs> I couldn't. Um, Massive shout out to Cam Bank from Reliable, um, from the Reliable Group uh, for sponsoring me for the weekend. Um, yeah, couldn't have done it without him. So yeah, still can, stoked to be here. Mate, can we see you again this year? Possibly. <laughs> mate, you, put on, you have put on a show and we have loved it. Yeah, wow. Well, uh, that's what I've um, yeah, come to try to do. So yeah. Well done, uh, mate. It's wicked. Cheers. Well, there we go. So, uh, hey, uh, Cole, you did were it, right. Did I say it? You said it. He chickened out. <laughs> he did. He needed to stay in it and he would have held that line. Absolutely awesome. It would have been a 90-plus point run, but hey, it's hard. Uh, he hasn't been in the seat much. He sure hasn't. Cole, I've heard that uh, the five minutes for Mitch Lana has to start now because every other battle, in, I guess, in the to battle down to the top four has now been done. Apart from that one there, they now have to start the five minutes, so. So we'll be down in the uh, CDT pit. Oh, here we go, we'll go down to Stephen McIver. So Mitch Lana's five starts now, okay? It's as simple as that, you've got five more minutes to sweat. Yeah, you should, um, you should hurry up, because I'm waiting here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go again. The, the, the judge has deemed it your fault, okay? So you can suck that one up. Ah, they don't know what they're looking at, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now nah, that's what you're talking Hey, I've got to say, this barrel wagon is on fire today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd just like to show, tell uh, Steve and also uh, Cole, the use of the word sir, just remind that, okay? Uh, yeah, that's what old Actually, people... what we should... Uh, actually, this is a question. I, I've, I've had this discussion with uh, uh, Jason before, but I've got a call coming in. Uh, explain Keep It Reet. So it's basically a flip off of Keep It Street. Uh, when we started Keep A Read, I got a mate out on track um, that has been building his car for a while. So it was like a, a bit of a thing going on. So we're like, yeah, flip it around. Reed's a bit of a word between us and our mates. So we're like, let's flip it around, keep it relaxed and off the street. We got, we started our first track day and then we started doing public days. Now we do competitions and it's all about a relaxed vibe and, uh, you know, a bit of Japanese vibe, no ego, just out there having a good time at a party and a bit of a show and, yeah, it's... That's it's, it. It's all about the show. If you're watching this on KO Sports, uh, I'm sure people would love to know when's the ne uh, next Keep It Reet Street event. So um, this coming Friday, actually, we've got Dave Egan coming over from Europe um, to jump in our pink R32 Skyline um, for our Battle Royale, our first round down at Calder Park Raceway. So and, uh, I might give a quick shout-out to the boys that Keep It Reet watching at home on the stream. You hear the boys? 
<laughs> All right, mate. Well, it's, it's so good to have you because you're a whole lot of fun. And I've got to say, I've got a lot of people that just love a pink shopping basket. Yeah, everyone loves the, the shopping trolley. It's a new nickname you've given it, I reckon. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, I mean no, no disrespect, OK? So that's the keep it right barrel wagon. All right, lads. Uh, so, so it's all on, and we'll send Tony, the cameraman, to, to go and have a look and see what's going on with Mitch Lana. Can you go do that, Tony? Off you yeah, go, Tony. You can nod, nod. Yeah, Thank you, nod. you, sir. You so just send it back to us. Sir. Yeah. The judge calls him sibilance. That's all I think of when I think of Jason Ferrin. It's a, uh, well, it's been exciting. Look at that bit of paper down there. We're looking at it. We've got some pretty sick battles coming up next. Yeah, we sure do. We've got three in there at the moment. We're still looking for one. Kurt Blackie, he's in the top four. Fanger Dan Wallhouse, Taylor James. And then the winner of Jason Ferrin versus Mitch Lana. Yeah, well, hopefully the uh, Mitch can definitely get that car fixed. Obviously, here's a bit of the, the battle tree of how the guys got there. Kurt Blackie one more time. Kurt Blackie one more oh, time. No, sorry, he Jason Ferrer and Mitch Lana are going to earn a one more time. Oh. Fill that spot there. Lucky um, you're here, the technical man. But Blackie took out the top qualifier to start with before going on against oh. Jenkins. That's how he got there. Back yeah. at Dan, Nico Reed, that was a big one. Then Dave Steadman hasn't made it easy. And then he's going to be facing Taylor James. Taylor, Taylor James, even if like, I'm going to beat Jeremy Slam, it will be easy. It wasn't. And then, of course, up against Geordie Cole as well. Another tough battle that was, I tell you. It's been exciting this uh, this weekend. Look at this. Look at that. Thank you, Dan's in there, even too. in there. What do you need? What can I help? I love this. And look, Darren Kelly, I told you, should have put those spanners down, boy. Now he's got the welder out. And look at that. Ben Jenkins is in there as well, trying to help it back together. I don't know if Darren knows how to weld, but he's giving it a good nudge. Hopefully he's got the safety equipment it's, on. That Haley is the Warby. one time that you can use the word penetration without getting in trouble. <laughs> he needs deep penetration on that weld for sure there, Steve. Make sure it holds. But look at all the team. Look yeah, at Taylor on James. There. He's like, no, we've That's got Taylor a Taylor James bit. right there as well helping. He's just finished. Oh, he's just finished. Hey. Getting a wheel on. Sometimes my crew would have told me, get out of there. When you were trying to find somewhere to stay last night, I was next to Mitch Lana having dinner. I'd like to throw that out. Oh, really? Thanks, Steve. Everyone forgets about us. I bought back chicken just in case you were still there. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. 30 seconds to go. What a time. No, it's Look on. It that. doesn't matter. The time finishes now. It doesn't matter. But he's totally fine because they've just got to get it off the axle stands and stuff. So that's fine. It, the 20, nah, just talk to, uh, to to Kenny and he'll explain what the yep, car Yeah, they're safe 20. now. So the car's done, they're finished, the wheels are on. Now they're just about 15. got the safety to uh, take the car off the axle stands uh, and ready to battle. I don't know why they call Who's calling it out? Kenny will say, like, shush, shush. Is, that, what I'm is doing. that Stephen MacGyver in the background calling it out? So what it is... Yeah, look, it is too. Look, there he is. I don't know why he's calling it out. Like He's quite embarrassed now. <laughs> I am certainly not embarrassed. <laughs> I have done this a lot of times. Uh, you just got owned. <laughs> oh, classic. But look at this. Okay, let's, go. let's talk to D DK. Come here. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of yahooing going on, so that's a good thing. You done care. the job? Yeah, it was a um, bit of a quick repair. Um, with the back of this thing, it's got two options for the traction arm to bolt into. We've had to go back to the other one, and the, it doesn't have enough run for the bolt to go all the way through. So we put it in a certain amount. It's tight, but then we just wanted to tack it to make sure it doesn't come out. So, yeah, it's good. We've done a quick eye alignment, and, um, yeah, we'll send it. Still got some butterflies, though? No, nah, not me. <laughs> Probably for him. But. <laughs> Where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? Oh, we'll talk to Kenny over here. Just over here quickly, Kenny. We're live, we're live on the thing, mate. As far as the safety procedure goes, everything good. That was, it, was, it was still up on the jack, but that's, that's all allowable as far as the five goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is an issue that one of the jack stands wasn't under it. Yeah. And that may, that may be an issue with uh, race control. We're going to let them run, and, but we're going to have to determine that, uh, as the battle continues uh, about that. So um, they've, they've followed the, the rule book. Um, the, the rules were, were put in for that reason, um, for driver safety. So there, there is a significant issue there that I only saw one axle stand under there. Um, and so we're going to have to yeah, make a call on that. But at the moment, they've done it within the time. And um, we'll have to double check the rule book again. <laughs> Safety first, but you exactly. do such a good job as looking after the competitors, mate. Nice job. And But there is never a dull day in Valvoline D1NZ. Wow. So what Kenny Rudder was saying is that part of the rules on the D1NZ is that you're allowed to get the car up, you get the axle stands underneath it, and once the axle stands are underneath it, you can commence working on the car. So who tells them to, yes, they can go ahead and work on the cars? Generally the man who 
starts the five minutes. So he may have not done his job right in checking the uh, safety stands were under the car. I don't think that's the team's fault in any way. But or, if, <coughs> but the only way it could, st so obviously I, neither of you or I were there, we're not judges, that's just our line we use. If they've started touching the cars, then bang, that starts. No, he has to make sure the car is safe before they do. No one, obviously everyone knows the rules and they wouldn't touch the car unless it has been deemed safe to do so. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Doubling Dingle and Z. Round number two, Mount Smart. It is action all over the show. It is. Especially the pits. Oh, it is indeed, Steve. There's been a lot of carnage. And look, good to see the car is back together for our last top eight battle. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Personal drinks. Oh, got it first. Yes. WA performance on the uh, front windscreen there of Mitch Lana. I think that's uh, Mitch Senior, who's always over here looking after the car for him, making sure everything is okay. Looked all right as he rolled out of the uh, pits here, Steve. Yeah, boy. Let's bring it on. What is our time, Steve? What's our time? The time now, New Zealand time. 12 minutes to the hour of 4 o'clock. I think you're 14 fun. minutes. Yeah, 14. there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's easy target. 14 minutes. I guess you uh, put your watch two minutes fast so you don't miss any meetings. Yeah, I haven't got one of those fancy watches that... Oh, you got a flash gold one, that's why. I think that's possibly why. I can't get this one here in, you know, whatever it's called. Oh, the... In smart. Yep. Well, there we go. We've just seen Jason head up to uh, scrub his tyres. And uh, hopefully we'll see uh, Mitch head up there straight after with a fresh set of rubber on there. This has uh, been a battle of the Aussies, hasn't it? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. We haven't had many one more times, have we? Great, isn't it? Oh, it is so great. <laughs> well, we got have. I think we've had one one more time today, wasn't it? Which was the one that this one here, and uh, we get to see them go again. So it's the Bear of the World. Keep it right. Uh, Thirty-one wag. The shopping trolley. It is. It's a cool car. They've uh, definitely done it right. Spent a bit of time. Definitely my favourite car in pro. Yeah, it's definitely a nice car. And look at it. Looks to be held back together. So Darren done his job, finally <laughs> making the car safe and ready for Mitch Lana to, uh, yeah, heat the tyres up. Obviously wanting to get those front tyres nice and warm before he heads out for the next part of this battle. All right, galore parts on the side of the Australian Mitch Lana's car. Keep it right on the side of the oh, Australian Jason Ferrin's car. It's the Battle of Australia. <laughs> state versus state. Here we go, Steve. Launchmaster Willie sending them off. Top eight battle. D1 NZ round two. Mount Smart. Let's go. Wow, look at that. Mitch Lana right on the door there. Jason Farron. Oh, no. Jason's had a bit of contact again. A little bit of a bobble there. Mitch having to take a bit of evasive action as they rotate into this outside zone here. Oh. Jason running a wheel off outside there, pulling a bit of a gap too through the uh, teardrop there as Mitch Lana tries to gather it back up, transitions now to this outside zone, and look at him right up on the door there of Jason Farron. Oh, and there's another little bobble going on with that big barrel wagon. Something was going on there, Steve, though. There's, there's a couple of little bobbles through there on the on the first part of the session. Yeah, definitely a couple of corrections, a couple of bobbles out there. We'll see them turn around and get ready to go again. Let's have a look at the Repco replay as Jason Farron leads down. Weight shift to yeah, Trance's drift. Yeah, transitions nicely through that. Must it, did he touch the wall there? See it come out of drift a little bit, a little bit of a bobble. Mitch doing well just to sit back. Man, it looks staunch, that car, doesn't it? That's a cool looking car. And this is the overhead, which again shows I thought this was a part here that he brought the nose down, but no. Nah, it's into this next section here. Rotates the car here. Nearly over rotates, and then watch here. Watch him pull a lot of angle out of the car. So obviously, either had it shut down or do something a bit funny on him. I think at the same time, we also see Mitch Lana's car get very, very sideways to finish off that section. I think that sort of look of the two cars coming together made it look a lot worse than it was. Well, yeah. We'll see the second half of the battle. We'll see what goes on. We'll let the judges decide. Mitch Lana, it's your turn. Galore pass 2JZ under the bonnet. Going up against the barrel wag. 
Yeah, look at that, Mitch Lana. Oh, no, Jason Ferrin shuts the wagon down. Heat. Mitch Lana, yeah, it could be. Mitch Lana just got to hold it together. Get into the last part of the section here. Looking really comfortable now in the uh, A90 Supra as he transitions through this next part of the section. Pushing to the outer zone here. He's got to finish the lap. Yeah, there's still the green light going on there. So Jason obviously got through, but wow, there it goes. Mitch Lana heading through to the top four. Jason Farron will be gutted about that. Something obviously uh, went down there and shut the car down. But here we go, we've got the Repco replay here. Look at Mitch Lana throwing it in here. Jason Farron trying to get on throttle and then look at that, bam. Just shuts it down. So I'm picking a, hopefully not another motor failure for, um, for Jason, obviously, like he just said, they've just done a fresh rebuild on it. So hopefully nothing too crazy. But yeah, a bit disappointing, especially after an epic battle both of these guys uh, just had. You know, you don't want to see a mechanical failure happen um, to get the win where both of them were driving so, so well in that uh, first battle they had. So uh, pretty sure we will see Mitch and Lana uh, roll through here for the top four battle now. All right. Here we go. Danny Templeman, Joel Counter, Andrew Redwood. Three strikes. Mitch Lana goes through. <laughs> a sigh of relief from uh, Darren Kelly. A sigh of relief, I'm sure, from Mitch Lana. Yeah, team worked phenomenally just then. They got this galore A90 Super back on track. Um, obviously, we took 10 minutes and had to call out five. So now we don't have a five. So hopefully everything's all good now. Um, awesome to drive with Jason. He told me he was going to set me on the trailer. Look who's going home now. So, um, obviously, all good fun. He's an awesome dude. Um, it's good to finally meet him and drive with him. I think everyone's wanted to see it for a while, and now, obviously, it's happened. I'm really happy with the driving now, feeling at home in this car. That lead run was absolutely awesome. I'm feeling this car now, and I can't wait to get into the top four. All right, see you against Kurt Blackie, buddy. Let's uh, go across the, the, the barrel wagon. Yep, well, there's a little bit of a damage on that right rear. <laughs> you, you look, you look, you look, what's going on? What happened? Yeah, so on initiation on chase, the clutch just disappeared when I kicked it. I don't know whether it's the yeah the clutch master or slave or something like that, but it's not what you want. I was ready to hunt his door. There was a few bubbles going on in my lead as well, so the car was sort of coming on and off power. Don't know what was going on there, but yeah, definitely not the way you want to go out. I was ready to door him, and uh, but uh, yeah, either way, at least it's an Aussie going through, so there's that. But yeah, shout out to Keeper Eat, uh, Pertec Bayswater, Kansai Wheels. Uh, How Tech ECU, MPC Clutch, I'm sure it's still mint, uh, PWR Radiators, <laughs> and um, oh, thanks to all the sponsors and the boys watching at home. Keep it re. Confirm. I just got a, a, call, a message from my mate Tony G. Tony Gallagher out of Rotorua. Yep, the Alice powered SCR X7. Throw up, throw up emoji is Matt Quox. <laughs> Tony G certainly a big fan of rotaries. Maybe suggesting that it's got the wrong engine in there. Classic. And wow. what is the rumble we hear now? Well, that sounds like a Mustang, an RTR Mustang, the Century Batteries Castrol New Zealand Mustang, the RTR Spec 5D, normally with a Roush Yates. But no, this weekend, it's got a Coyote Supercharged V8. This is the car we used to call the activation car. And I hear that the Vaughan Gittin Junior car is getting lined up ready for our next round. And it's going to have a monster Cornet Ford. Speedway people will certainly know what a Cornet is. Came out of a Super Saloon, possibly with an eight on the side. Mr. Craig Cardwell's car, I understand. But he is going to go up against the biggest RB you can get right now. And that is the RB34 of the ProWare, Valino S. 14 of Taylor James. This is Taylor versus Fanger for a spot in the final D1NZ. It is semi-final time, Mount Smart. Let's set them loose. Well, here we go, Fanger then leading out into that first entry. Nice and wide. Pushing that car real deep. Taylor just doing a nice job sitting in that pocket, not getting too close there. Fanger dialing that car with a lot of angle into that outside zone. Really opening the door up for Taylor James to jump on that pocket. 
Doing a good job through here as they transition nicely before Taylor wants to dive back up on Fangersdorf. But he's so shallow. Big mistake there by Taylor James. Trying to get up on the door of Fanger Dan. <coughs> what a lead there by Fanger. Big mistake there by Taylor James with a big bobble as he came through the uh, teardrop and through that little transition. Well, let's go straight to the Repco replay. A nice start for both these drivers. Oh, indeed, Steve. Look at this wide line here by Fanger. Taylor a little bit shallow, obviously trying to get that proximity back up. Bam, and a clip. Nailed. Bam, rotates. That's it. Not quite to that outside zone that the judge is wanting. Taylor up on the inside just a little bit, getting that proximity back. Then look as we roll through here. Transitions. Boom, right there. Has a little bit of lack of drift through that centre section. Obviously staying in drift, but not exactly what the judges would want to see and none of us uh, as you come into this Pro Top 4. So Taylor will know he will need to be pushing really hard on this uh, lead run to try and force an error from Fingerdan. Well, let's see how he can do it now as Taylor James fires it down the straight. Pro wear on the side. Time to get the power of the RV down. Here comes the back bumper. Yeah, look at that. Big entry from Taylor, rolling right out into that outside zone, pulling a bit of a gap there on Finger Dan, staying nice and wide as Taylor. Real good lead run here by Taylor James. Finger Dan catching back up through the uh, teardrop here as now they transition through this next section. Now let's see how Taylor sits. Finger sitting nice and wide. Taylor, a real, real good lead run, but I think, Steve, that one mistake. That could shallow line coming all in. it could be. We always so talk minimal. about mistakes. It's generally not the. It's, it's the mistakes that cost the. And right now, and we're talking about it. There's a few there. Now let's look. Great entry here by Taylor James. Fanger a little bit shallower. Uh, sorry, a little bit less angle here. Trying to catch back up. Obviously keep that proximity. But look at this from Taylor James. Real nice wide line. So a better line than Fanger through this section. Deeper through here as well. Didn't drop a wheel. Really nice from Taylor there through that centre section. Fanger holding it together, but right there, Fanger's able to hold it, hold the angle, and pull the drift. Yes, he's not right up on Taylor's door, but I think the mistake was enough that uh, will send Mal Fanger maybe possibly through to the final again for the second time. He can't get four. Only the GOATs got four. Wow, Fanger Dan gets the win. Holy through to the final. Yeah, it feels a bit like that, doesn't it? Oh, man, you know, well, I was giving Taylor a bit of grief and um, back at the pits, I was like, well, you bet me last year. I think it's my turn, eh? So, um, no, nah, he's, he's going super strong and um, I'm still fighting the steering, but I'm ha also having a lot of fun out there. Well, I just think Kurt's up next. It could be you and him, one and two. We'll see what happens. The Pro Air S14, Taylor James, Maybe that transition cost you. Yeah, I switched in behind him and grabbed the handbrake. It just didn't really lock the wheels. So I just last minute thought, give it a big reboot and try and sort of stack some more angle on and it worked. But yeah, it, it would have cost me, I'd say. Yeah, do you think you're evolving with these tyres? Yeah, it's feeling really good, honestly. Um, we did up the pressures a bit and just to play it safe so I can do a nice lead, you know. But um, yeah, no, nah, it, it felt good apart from that. So all right, we'll see you for the battle for third. Cheers, mate. Well, Cole, he was super quick in the, uh, there goes Mitch Lana heading out to uh, so these, both of these cars super quick. We've seen this one here, which we've got on our screen now for a good uh, good side of maybe 10 years. Do you know it? both of these cars are borrowed? Yes, of course. Yeah. Wish I just got the borrow cars. <laughs> 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 well, this one here is Century Batteries on the side of it, of course, Castro. But Gas Tech Colab Digital, they're the personal sponsors of Kurt Blackie going up against the Galore Parts do you, Supra. Do you think Kurt Blackie's going to go, if I've done well in this car, hey, Finger, you reckon I could borrow it for the next round until we've got a couple of champs that just rolled in the room? <laughs> oh, it looks like it was celebration through there too. Yeah, but no, this is going to be a pretty uh, pretty sick battle here coming up right now. Obviously, Kurt Blackie leading out Mitch Lana on this one, so let's see how they go, Steve. Well, off they go down the front straight here. It's round two of the Babbling D1 and Dead Pro Championship. As straight as action goes the VF Holden Commodore. Normally, Fanger Dan, no, Kurt Blackie behind the wheel. Look at Kurt Blackie driving this thing so well, transitioned so smoothly, 
through that outside zone. Look, putting the car really wide here. Keeps missing that inside clip, though, I have to say. Transitions nicely through the centre section here. Mitch Lana really having to shortcut the track to try and keep up with this big VF Commodore. But look at this by Kurt Blackie, ladies and gentlemen. Get on your feet. Wow. Oh, hey. look, there goes Bang and there goes Nicole. They're happy with what they see. They're like, that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> well set yeah, up boy. car, eh, Banger? Well set up car. Making it easy for them. But here we go, the Repco replay. Look at the entry there by Kurt Blackie. Just initiation, confidence, nice and close to that outside zone. Tucks the nose in here. Mitch Lana having a shortcut to catch back up. Getting that proximity. Now this is the one part that Kurt just can't get this big girl to slow down. Doesn't probably have the lock that he's used to. And that's to get to that in the clip. But the rest of the run here by Kurt Blackie. Absolutely stellar. Pushing out to that outside zone. Mitch Lana doing a good job as well, eh, Steve? And how good is confidence in this? When, you have, when you're confident to drive a car, how much better do you drive it? Oh, second and none, mate. Second and none. You know, like Mitch Lana would be the same. Really starting to get confident in the car. Starting to, to feel it. And uh, we'll see now on this one as they switch things up, Steve. All right, well, off we go. It's the Perth Form Trucks Galore Pass. Supra of Mitch Lana is straight into the back distance from yesteryear. Yeah, and look at this. Kurt Blackie right up on the inside there. A little bit less angle in the big VF, but Mitch Lana doing a good job out here in the lead. Running a nice wide line. And look at Kurt Blackie right up on the inside there of Mitch Lana. Closing up the door. Is he what? Now let's see him transition now into this outside zone. It's Kurt Blackie gets right up on the door. Mitch Lana, what a lead run for Kurt Blackie, pushing hard. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, what was have, that enough? What have we seen? Where, who's this driving Where this Commodore? Where did Kurt Blackie come from? Far out. You know what's going to happen. Oh, uh, please, please, Wolfie please, please. this new Commodore. Oh. <laughs> I can see more of a chance of Carl Thompson going, nah, actually, I'm going to grab that one there and take it home with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at this replay. What a lead by Mitch Lana. Look at him. Real wide here. Smooth angle. Yes, there's a little bit of a, a bobble there from Kurt trying to catch up the proximity, but right there with him. Staying wide, Steve, through here. What a lead by Mitch. Look at that. Smooth through the centre section. Holding it together. Transitioning through the middle here. Now pushed real wide. Was a bit of a different line through there. Really opened the door for Kurt to come back up on the inside. And look, did he what? He did, we, I just can't get over it. Well done to both of these drivers. We know how good a driver Mitch is, but come on. Wow. I know what I want. Yeah, it's the end, Jake. Yes! What? Why yes! are you kidding me? <laughs> this is the thing again. And Kurt Blackie. Final! Wow! What is going on? You okay? Shaking. Um, emotions are so high at the moment. Doing this in a borrowed car that I only drove for the first time yesterday. This is probably my 14th or 15th lap in the car. And she's a big old girl to throw around. And um, it's a dream battle to go at, at, up against Mitch, actually. He's been a um, long-time friend of mine over the ditch. and. Um, yeah, it's awesome to actually drive with such an awesome driver like him. And um, hats off to him, eh? Um, <laughs> let's just, I don't know, let's let's take it all the way, eh? Well, you know, you're in, you're in a big old beast, but you're up against the big old dog now. Yeah. So don't don't show him any mercy. Yeah, me and Fanger were saying earlier on, like how how insane would it be to um, have both of the cars one and two going together for the final, and look how it's panned out. Like it's a dream result for me and the team, and and for Fanger's team to. Um, it's going to be one hell of a ride, that's for sure. It's been a hell of a ride so far. Go get him in the final. Okay, so it's Fanger Dan and his RDR Mustang against his other Century Batteries Commodore, Gas Tech Services and CoLab Digital, who sponsor Kurt. And wow. I mean, he just gave you some big props. He's been waiting to race you for a long time and absolutely loved it. Yeah, no, he's an absolute legend. I've known him for a good 10 years now. He supported me when I was very young and we first started. Um, props to him, he's driving awesome, he, he deserves it, he's had a hard few seasons and uh, obviously his car this season giving him trouble, props to, uh, to Fanger for giving him the car and giving him the opportunity obviously, that's what we're all here for and unfortunately I think we've done more damage than we've realised and it didn't feel like I had a lot of grip in the back left rear, um, obviously no excuses, he drove phenomenal, that car was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be and uh, the Glory 890, we'll, we'll go back now, we'll check it over, we've still got another place to go so hopefully I know I've got Tay, I'm not holding any, any punches with him, we're going to go out there and try and get this car on the podium. 
Go get it. Thank you. So there you go. You've got Mitch Lana up against Taylor James and Fanga Dan against his old car with Kurt Blackie and his new Wolfie. Just, just, just a reminder, Wolfie. Just he want, we got to look after Wolfie who's sitting there back on the bay. Pretty sad. But this is the new Wolfie and it's going ahead dead for the battle for round two of Valvoline D1NZ. Three and four coming up. <laughs> this is a bonkers day, but you've got to love it. Well, it's the Babylon D1NZ National Drifting Championship. And what a day we've seen so far. Let's have a look at some of these drivers we've got. Kurt Blackie, he's about to go into his very first final ever. And let's have a look at how he got there. Kurt Blackie started off, he uh, qualified in 16th position. Went up against Rome, uh, Charpentier, uh, Charpentier, Charpentier, sorry, um, took the win. Over, over him, moving into a battle with the top 16 against Alex Pelier. Pelier came through with the win on that one there and he'd have to go up against Troy Jenkins. Again, grabs the victory over Troy Michelana. This guy's working for it. Now he's in the final versus Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Fanger qualified second, gets a free pass into the top 24. Then Nico Reed, not easy, never easy against the people's champion. From there he moves into the top eight, Dave Steadmans, his next scalp, goes into the top four against Taylor James and now he's into the final and it is Fanger Dan's car versus Fanger Dan's car. It's gonna be crazy. It's, it's the coolest thing ever to see. I got to do it a few years back. I think Fanger talked about it as well when uh, Gizzy came in and did a bit of driving. I think he drove my R34 and yep. I obviously had my G35 and it is just, it's the coolest thing. It's something you've you've driven and not really ever had anyone else drive and then you're battling against your own car. It's the coolest photo shoot. I've actually got a mean ass photo at home of both my cars full side by side and uh, it'll be something Fanger will definitely capture. Like that's uh, the one no that's going to be on the wall for life, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's so cool to have both your cars. Unless Fanger comes second. Oh, I will <laughs> laugh if that happens, eh? You know what? He, I don't think he'll care though. He'll love it either way, but <laughs> yeah, that'll be a hoot of coop. That's him. Oh, wow. But I certainly would not want to line up driver's door to driver's door if that happens. I'll be like, just go around the side, because we can be a little bit further away. <laughs> Keep a bit of distance, you reckon? That or Fanger Dan's just going to do what Fanger Dan does and just lay the smack down. Well, they've already had uh, a battle together, both of them out there. I've seen yeah, them uh, time, had a bit they? of practice, and I have to say, they drove pretty well. Well, especially, especially Kurt in a, in a borrowed car, so... Mitch Lana, awesome to see him right now. Also up in the top four, uh, third and fourth battle now. Um, really, really good to see him and him and Taylor. They've worked together, you know, been over in WA. Taylor went and drove there, and now look, Mitch is over here. So, yeah, it's a cool one, man. It's be a excited. Cool one. It's a cool one. I can't wait. Well, welcome back to the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship Series. It's round number two here at Mount Smart Stadium. Tom Makimakota in Auckland. We have uh, we've certainly seen some interesting battles, and I know we've got some great highlights for the show. Let's go and check out what we've seen today and go through it, Cole. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Cove and cash, I never lack those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace chunks, I hit my back stroke. Well, that's the, uh, the bit of a hit with the concrete <laughs> for the Mimico machines, taking out the cones. Fanger on his way to the final. Yeah, I was unsure if we needed to talk on this one or not. <laughs> there was a bit of just a music going on, but here's our man there, Geordie Cole. He just chickened out on that one. Needed to stay hard in the throttle, and uh, that would have been another stellar run from him, but that's all she wrote with a bit of a steering bind. And <clears throat> well, it's experience that gets you there, and you got to feel experience in that one there. Well, look at that battle there. Jeez, experience he's got that. Oh, wow, what a drive from the, uh, the bull-headed man. And then a couple of Australians, not Anzac, just the A. Australia versus Australia, keeping it right versus a Supra. 
real good battle, eh? I'm just liking Jason's style. He's just such a cool, laid-back guy. And uh, just out here having fun, you know? That's what we all want to see. And then same thing, Michelana, just getting the gist of it, starting to feel comfortable in that Supra, our pro sport, our up-and-comers. Battle for third and fourth. We haven't got a result for that one there. But uh, this Matty J. Oh, you're lucky. I was just about to say what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been not good at all. Oops. But no, yes. good battles. And then this man here, the man who leads the championship in the pro sport, of course, trying to uh, get his hand on the on the uh, on the trophy. Driving freaking well, eh? Case pulling Barry, man, on a two-three-five radial, putting the car so close to the wall so many times. It is mental. Pete Drever also stepping up. Look at this. This is his first final. And uh, what a drive. And what a cool thing for that book that they're, they're promoting. ABC Drift Kit. Stuff created, yeah. I might add. Taylor James. That was a hard battle. <coughs> Bang was. hasn't had it easy to the final. And you did look, that's all it took. Such it's so small on the points factor. There's probably a quarter point in it where uh, Taylor James had a little bit of a bobble on the uh, chase there, where, yeah, as he said, the handbrake just didn't lock, uh, let the car rotate as he wanted, and uh, that's all she wrote. And then there was this kid here from Tauranga who looked like he was going to pull out of the championship around this weekend and then got a couple of phone calls one was actually from simon lee in Tauranga. he said you can use my car fanger went nah it's all right simon i've got this he can use my holden and like fanger said it's so cool to see it's something you know i've just sold my car as well it's a car you want to see on track you want to see someone enjoying it it's something that oh excuse me um we, you know, you've developed over so long and it's such a beast just to sit there. So I think we'll be pumped to see that out there. There's a bit of heat starting to rise. It's coming off the track. Yeah, there's here all the go. fans waving out, enjoying it. We've got the final about to kick off here, ladies and gentlemen. So get yourself a nice cool beverage. Get ready to roll because uh, here comes our third and fourth battle. Taylor James lined up, ready to go. Nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how mean. See, a uh, few drivers getting ready to go out and the judges have popped through. Just to, to say hello. Just to say hello. Uh, but they weren't ready. But that's all right. Look at this man here, Taylor James, Central Drift Team. Pro wear on the side as I'll be proud to see his name out there on the side of this beautiful RB34 powered Nissan S14. Now Pro Wear is where you can get some awesome custom suits made, race suits, kid suits, all sorts of suits out there. I know I've definitely had a few myself uh, made over the time. So get in touch with Pro Wear. They can sort you out with a custom suit or also a uh, full safety race suit. And obviously all the gear there, Steve. All the gear and they've got an idea. That's something that I can't do, but we can see, look, it's the... Uh, Putting everything on. Yeah. Oh, that, so that's it's his mic, so he obviously can talk with comms and uh, chat away. But that, that's the full safety gear that they run here. You know, safety gloves, boots, socks, shoes. Now these cars are all running on uh, heavy race fuel. So yeah, here we go, Taylor James, out in the scrub box, getting ready to go. So uh, gonna be an interesting one, third and fourth battle. Up it comes. Of course, in the uh, Pro Wear Valeno Tires RB34 powered central equipment, Nissan S15 187 on the roof. It is Taylor James scrubbing up, getting ready to rumble. Gonna get ready to set down those Valenos and grab a spot on the podium, that's the plan. But there's only one way you can do it, and that's by beating this man here out of Australia in the Galore Parts Group Supra. <laughs> oh, 
no, Steve. There's a little bit of a waterfall coming down. <laughs> Just call off, boy. Call your jets, boy. Call your jets, Steve. Oh, I tell you, man, we have a good bit of fun up here. Thank you so much. I've loved everything you've given to me. Oh, we have a good bit of fun up here. This is the wet battle for third and fourth. I promise you, it's oh. not sweat. <laughs> Run us through here, Steve. Well, here we go down the front straight. Mount Smart Stadium. And it is the battle for third and fourth. Taylor James leads the way. Looked like a slight correction to start for the Supra. See how we go. Yeah, that's it. Looks like Mitch Lana sitting right in behind there of Taylor James. Look, right in the pocket. Taylor doing a nice lead run, opening the door here for Mitch. Look, transitions nicely, bang. Now right up on the inside. Real shallow line there from Taylor also. But look at that, Mitch really countering it on that and sitting right on the door. So two real good mates here. Pushing hard for the uh, third or fourth spot here in the final. But check out this retro replay. What an entry there by oh, Taylor. Touch touched the wall as well. Look at the smoke those tyres are putting off. The grip in that car is phenomenal. Look at it sitting down, squatting, trying to pull away from that Supra through the teardrop here. Slow the car up through this centre section as now they transition to the outside zone here. Now look at Mitch, way up on the inside. Probably going to get hurt quite hard on that because he was past the front wheel when you really need to sit back and actually be right at the driver's door or the rear quarter. So, yeah, even though Mitch was right up on the uh, on the side there of Taylor James, it's not exactly what the judges want to see, and that is uh, the rear quarter. So let's see how they go there. for the next part of uh, their round. Mitch leading out over uh, Taylor James. So this will be interesting. Taylor cannot give him an inch to be fair in my eyes. That was a really close battle by one another. We want to see Taylor right up on the door here of uh, Mitch Lana's A90 Supra. Well, they're set loose. It's in the hands of Launchmaster Willie, and off we go down the front straight of Mount Smart. The battle for third and fourth as the Galore Barge Group Supra backs it in. Wow, did you see that? He just pulled away from Taylor like nothing. Good to see Taylor catching back up, getting right up on the door here, but less angle there from Taylor, really. Oh, a bit of contact from these two boys. Not what we want to see. Taylor James having contact with Mitch Lana through there. Just got too close. Now that oh, is a wow. desal zone as well, so Mitch is allowed to slow down. Taylor needs to give way and uh, sit back a bit there, but he was trying to play catch up from the start. Well, let's have a look at the replay, Cole. Everything looked fine to start with. Well, look at that. Mitch just pulled like two car lengths on Taylor. Taylor was sleeping on the line, got left behind, now played catch up here. Shallower line through the center section. They rotate through this uh, outside zone here. Taylor with a lot less angle, then just bang, comes right up. Now that's a desal zone, so Mitch is allowed to slow down there. Taylor just needed to give him a bit of a gap and uh, Did, uh, distance. Darren Kelly weld that front bumper on as well. Yeah, I'm thinking. That's why it's broken. So what is this, five minutes? No, hang on. That was. Yeah, we just got to see. Obviously, it was the third part of that run. So to be fair, I'd say the run's over in Taylor's yeah, eyes. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't really call a five minutes because they're already on the second part of the run. But uh, yeah. definitely disappointed, no doubt, for Taylor James in that one. Our director doesn't know a lot about drifting, so sometimes they say things. Yeah, but look at that. Looks like uh, Mitch has come away pretty unscathed on that. And the uh, Supra still looks to be in one right. piece. So. Well, I, I can tell you that a decision has been made. Well, you'd like to think so. Yeah, it looks like Taylor's got this. <laughs> Let's go down and talk to Steve McIver. OK, so the one thing we do understand, and probably Taylor James is a little frustrated trying to bend his front bars back, and the decision has, has been made. We, we do, we're not going to find that out to prize giving made. What happened? Oh, I just come around. Like, I was close, but I don't know if Mitch done a quick adjustment on the handbrake or brakes or what. Like. I can feel my wheel rubbing on his door or whatever, and then we just the gap closed up real quick. So 
don't know. He must have got off the gas or made an adjustment. Like, not his fault. I was close, but I knew I had to be. So. It was a D cell zone. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it is what it is, and <laughs> shit happens, eh? Y yes, it does. We'll find that a prize giving, mate. Don't go too far. Tweet it. All right, we'll just quickly jump over to Mitch. M Mitch Lahn, they're going to scrub the uh, boys for the big one. Is RTR Mustang, a Fangadan who won round one. Uh, a decision's been made, we're not going to tell you. How did you feel about that? Oh, man. Just been out of drive with my boy, obviously. I love the bloke. We get along so well. He's helped me out so much to even be able to be over here and come do this program. And just to be able to drive together and put it all out there, knowing that one of us is going to the podium so we know we're not knocking each other out, is such an awesome feeling. I went out there, I drove as hard as I could, put this uh, Toyota Glores 890 Super to the test today, and I think we got the win, but we'll see what happens. And uh, I'm just, it's, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks to everybody that made this happen. Steve at Toyota Glores, Brendan White at D1NZ, my parents at the Way Performance, Perth Forklifts, Oh, there's so many people to thank, but I'm just so grateful to be here. You're a good man. See you soon. Well, the time is now. The time is ready. Mount Smart Stadium. This is the first time we're going to see a couple of Castro cars lined up together, a couple of Sentry cars lined up together, and one is parked up at the line. Driving the Century Batteries, Castro New Zealand CTB Performance, 800 horsepower V8, a three times New Zealand Drift King from Whangarei. He's won more battles than the rest of the field combined. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Fanga Dan Woolhouse. And what has happened here? The bumper's coming off because Kurt Blackie looks like he wants to get close to the concrete in the final, driving the Colab Digital Gas Tech. Castro New Zealand CTB Performance Century Batteries. It would be a Toyota GT86, but now it is Fanger Dan's. Oh no, he just clipped the wall in the scrub box. Commodore, this oh is the God. final, <laughs> and it is between Kurt Blackie and Fanger Dan Woolhouse. It's in the hands of Launchmaster Willie, and off we go. It's final time. Oh, look at this. What an entry there by Fanger Dan Kurt Blackie. Wow, pushing really wide into that outside section, but catching back up. Fanger will rotate really fast through the centre section, pushing out really wide. Kurt just needed to tuck up on the inside there. Now, this is a part that he struggles with. Look at Fanger, right up on the inside there. Kurt closing the door, trying to get back up on the inside there. Look at this one, Kurt Blackie, right up on the door of Fanger Dan. Hanger will be loving that, seeing the Commodore right on the door there. Oh, that is impressive. Look at that. This is Fangadan's car versus Fangadan's car. It's the Ford versus the old girl, the VF. Let's have a look at the replay of that run. Fanger gets an early break as he leads down the straight, but here comes Kurt Blackie trying to gain it back again. Yeah, it's surprising how much grip that uh, Mustang has. It pulled away even from the VF, but yeah, a little bit of a wobble there from Kurt Blackie coming through that uh, first section. Transitions nicely into this outer zone. Watch the door close here as Kurt comes right up. He finds it quite hard to tuck the nose in into that inside clip, but does really well to gather it back up. And then look at the commitment right up on the rear quarter there of Fanger as they finish that section. Kurt will be absolutely pumped. Oh, I still can't believe he crashed back the car and in the in the warm-up box. Oh, Kurt's happy because the thumbs up. Look, Fanger looks over as well. The second half, this is the final. Hopefully the final time we're going to see these cars out on track. Who's going to win it? Will it be Fangadan Woolhouse, your three times, and your current Drift King, or is it going to be the hot shot in his first ever final? Kurt Blackie out of Tauranga. Let's go. That's it. Look at this. Kurt Blackie enters here real nice. Pushing wide, but look at that. That's my car in front of you there, sir. I'm going to get right up on the door of that. And look at this, Kurt Blackie pushing nice and wide. What a line there by Kurt Blackie, opening the door for Fanger to get right up on the inside, slowing the car down nicely. Now, this is a good battle from both drivers. Kurt pushing a little bit wide there, but open the door up for Fanger to come right up on the inside there. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. The Century Battery Mustang and Commodore are doing it right. What a final battle, that is good to see. Oh, Century batteries are going to be over the moon. So will Castrol. And of course, Gas Tech collab on the side. Have a look at the Repco replay. It's Kurt's turn to lead. Yeah, he does. Look, nice entry into the centre section here. Pushes nice and wide here. Pretty smooth through that uh, outer zone. Tucking the nose in. Sitting in it real well. Rotating the angle nicely. Pushing out into that outer zone. Probably even wider than Fanger was. Actually tucked the nose in onto that inner clip. Probably a half a car off. 
but rotates through this midsection. Was a little bit odd on that line, to be fair, but got him out into that outside zone. Fanger right up on the door there, holding it together. What a final battle. Really cool to see. What a final battle. One more look at the Repco replay as we see that lead run by Kurt Blackie. 05 on the door. On the roof, sorry. Sentry batteries on the door. Yeah, look at that. Nice and wide there on throttle. See, they're just checking, did Kurt Blackie drop a wheel there? I think he was right on the line. But well, no back bumper as well. Meant he couldn't clip a cone. Yeah, that's it. Did real well. But look at that rotation by Fanger. A lot of commitment there. Feeling that Kurt's starting to get really comfortable in the car. Really, really good to see there, Steve. So, how good does it get? We got a result, but you gotta wait. Who will win round two of Valvoline D1NZ? Come back in a moment, because you'll find out, and we do the podium for Pro Sport and Pro. Get it! D1NZ National Drifting Championship, and we have just seen one heck of a final between Kurt Blackie and Fanger Dan Woolhouse. The uh, Colab Digital Gas Tech LS powered VF Holden Commodore absolutely setting the pace out there. Of course, driving the Century batteries, the same thing. We've said the same name CTB Performance 800 horsepower V8, the three times New Zealand drift king from Fangadan. Fanger Dan. I don't know if Fanger Dan ever expected to be out there on track against his own car and of all people Kurt Blackie behind the wheel Kurt didn't have a car to race uh, to drift earlier in the week Simon Lee came and said you can use my Mimico 300Z he said I'd love to it's got an LS I like that idea but then Fangadan said actually I'll tow down from Fangadan my VF Holden Commodore and we've seen that car do so well in New Zealand drifting competition we're starting to see a few more of those cars rolling in. It's going to be prize giving in only a couple of minutes' time. Pro Sport, what a drive by those guys there. Pro. Who is going to be declared the winner? We're going to go down shortly to Stephen McIver. See the media starting to make their way in. Banger Dan going for his best Taylor James hat impression. Turns it back around and says, no, nah, I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. So the car's driving in to the teardrop section at the top of the course. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've had a fantastic time here. You can see the chat happening between Fanger and Kurt Blackie. They're loving it. It's so we've uh, got a few teams heading the way of... Uh, of the podium. We're certainly hoping to light Mount Smart up and create a smoke show if we can get the victory skids started and in place. Well, there they are. There are three pro cars and we're just waiting on our third pro sport. Matty J just moving forward. Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship, Mount Smart, Auckland, putting on a show this weekend. It was meant to be Friday, Saturday. It turned out to be Saturday, Sunday. Smoke and sunshine makes for a pretty cool day out as we complete round two of Valvoline D1NZ. Drift fans, show your appreciation for these mighty men and their teams. Give it up for these drifters, folks. That's what we're talking about. All righty, well, while we get the podium set up for the pro boys, we'll bring Rod McLean in from Valvoline. He's the big V. 
Uh, mate, I, actually, I've got, to, I've got to say, you look like you should be on a NASCAR team ready to change tyres. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah, my hands are too small, though. <laughs> Talk to me. This, is, this has been a big day today. It's been huge, and um, it's great to see the weather stuck with us. Uh, it's been a bit tough over the last couple of weeks, as we know, here in New Zealand. So thinking about everyone out there that's having a tough time at the moment, and our thoughts are, w are with you. Um, but to the drivers today and the fans that came out, thank you very much. Yeah, mate, you, 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 have, you have been here uh, yesterday as well. You've got yourself deep into this, haven't you? I've got right into it, yeah, up to my neck and loving it, yeah. All right, mate, get ready for the second podium presentation. Absolutely, thanks very much. Cheers. All right, folks, our second podium presentation, I'm going to move out of the way, and that will be for round two of Valvoline D1NZ and the Pro Championship. And here we go. So in fourth position, in fourth position in the Pro Championship, driving the ProWear S14, Taylor James. And in third position, our first podium position, driving the Parts Galore Toyota Supra, Mitch Lana. And in second position, who will it be? Who will it be? Driving the Colab Digital Gas Tech Services VF Commodore Century Batteries car, Kurt Blackie! Which means for the second round in a row, driving these Sentry batteries, Adia Mustang, please welcome your round champion and defending champion of D1NZ, Fanga Dan! Yeah, there's, it's always an Aussie that has to shape things up. Hold your trophies up, boys, first of all, so folks can take those photos. And now, if you can meet, meet Mitch Lana to it, spray some champagne, folks. There is your official podium, round two, celebrating 20 years of Valvoline D1NZ. <laughs> All right, let's get and have a talk to Dan. Come here, Dan. Oh, hang on. Ah, uh, yeah, right, okay. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I could share that with you, actually, mate. <laughs> hey, mate, turn, just turn around here, buddy. Uh, congratulations. That was a, a crazy round, and you had two cars in the final. Oh, I think that's just, you know, everyone's dream, you know, like all these guys, you know, the Jenkins, and, you know, they'd be like, they'd love to have their cars in the finals, you know, or, to, you know, win a round and have your teammate beside you. And, wow, well, like, you know, from where Kurt started and where he finished and us in the finals was... I'm just blowing away, but I, you know, I just want to thank all my brand partners, my crew, you know, double running these cars. Um, we had some major trouble with, with ours and we've still got problems that we need to fix when we get back. But um, yeah, what an event. That's my favourite event. I think that's maybe why I do so well. I just come here with a big smile and want to put on a big show. So, Congratulations, mate. I think we've got about 20, 30 seconds left. Uh, where's Kurt Blackie? Okay. Oh, I've got longer. Oh, I've got longer. Sorry, I was hearing numbers in my head. Uh, I, I honestly, come on, don't be afraid, mate. Don't be afraid. I haven't heard you so happy in such a long, long time. What did it mean to P2 it today, even though it wasn't the real Wolfie? Yeah, it's, um, it's a surreal feeling. I never really thought I'd get this far, especially in a borrowed car. And kudos to Fanger for, for trucking me the keys. Um, you know, only for, I was driving that car yesterday, so it's pretty fresh to me. But that thing is so set up so well, and it just does what it what it needs to do to get the job done and this is just an unreal feeling like um, yeah lost for words but nah kudos to um, Mitch for also getting on the podium and then yeah Fanger for winning it was it's a dream battle for me and me and Fanger getting these two cars out there in the in the in the final so dream result really congrats mate cheers Thanks, let's mate. bring Mitch Lana over where's Mitch come on over here Mitch uh, can, can Considering what happened today with the back end or the rear left rear of that car, P3 must be pretty satisfying. Absolutely stoked. I've got to firstly say thanks to all of Taylor James's team, my dad, and everybody that chipped in. Um, these boys, obviously you saw the car, the back of the wheel was folded in, did a full lap with the wheel, smashing everything in the back. Um, 
You could see when we first Kurt, I didn't realise it was obviously something else that was still wrong with the car, but we got out there, put it all out there, and yeah, to come away with third this weekend after everything we've been through for the last three weeks. You know, we put this program together in three days before round one. Um, big shout out to Steve at Toyota Galores, Brendan White at D1NZ. Obviously, these guys made this possible for me, and um, yeah, I can't believe that we made it to the podium. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. I haven't competed overseas, and three years and to get back on the podium overseas it's great so i'm excited well done mate thank you and that wraps that wraps up round two of valvoline d1nz i'll just quickly get uh cole's thoughts on the sprint briefly oh, how exciting was that it's so exciting i you know <clears throat> start to lose my voice up there again what a final you know it's so cool to see thanger and kurt blackie kurt finally getting up into uh where he should be up in the top spot here for the for the D1NZ and hopefully it carries on for the rest of the year. You would have been excited down with all the lads. I was very excited. All right, we are done. Thanks for your time, Steve the Māori, all the team. Uh, that is round two of Valvoline D1NZ. We are back in March for so much more in Topo International Motorsport. Do you not love Valvoline D1NZ celebrating 20 years? Yes, we do. Yes, you do. We'll see you in March in Topo. So if you're watching this on K on Fox and also motorsport.tv, we have uh, had one hell of a day. Cole Armstrong <laughs> joins me yet again. And I think when the last time a year ago, it wasn't it, it was in the rain and it was, it was, it was it sort of disappointed us because we know how good this circuit is. Uh, today we were, we were spoiled. Oh, we were indeed. The battles were, were hectic. The, the pro sport, even them stepping up, wow. Scraping the walls, there was action everywhere, and then as I say before, the final, finally getting to see both the Fangers cars out there. I love that man, I was excited for him. I do think though in pro sport we are seeing a young star on the rise, and I think we already know who I'm going to talk about, Case Pull and Burry, uh, that run in the final, in fact this runs all day, were just smooth. So smooth, I, I didn't even see any pro drivers come in, scrape the rear bumper on the first and second outer clip. That young man has a future ahead of him and I'm really looking forward to seeing him step up probably next year, no doubt. Uh, but the, the rest of this year, I really feel he's going to dominate. Well, it's the old boys, the OG of Fanger Down, who's uh, comfortably leading this Valvoline D1NZ Championship. So where did the threats come from? They're pushing hard, but just somehow he seems to drag it through. Definitely. It, it, it all comes down to the small mistakes. He's not making uh, many mistakes out there. You know, he's pushing now for that fourth championship. There's only one other fella who's ever got one of them, and that's Gaz Water. So if he does get it, does that mean finally Gaz might come back? Who knows? It, it, Bit of pressure. It, it, it feels like you, you want him to come back, although the most <laughs> important thing that's going to happen now, folks, wherever you're watching around the world, and this is the fun part, you know what it, it's like winning twice, uh, victory skids. Oh, this is a good part, mate, where we really get to blossom in the, uh, <laughs> in the smoke uh, that these cars are going to put off right now. What a show it will uh, finish for us. All right, well, on behalf of all the team, uh, from uh, Vault TV, all the crew, the likes of you, Steve Daniels, uh, Cole Armstrong, everybody doing this job, I think, we I think we should just finish with some skids, don't you? Oh, yes, please, sir. So wherever you're watching around the world, that was round number two of Valvoline D1NZ, New Zealand's National Drifting Championship. We're back on the 17th and 18th of March at Topo International Motorsport as we celebrate 20 years. 20 great years and 20 more to come. Time to send them for some skids.